I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic from which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The roll call for the uh, meeting of the Newport City Council on July 11th. Councilor Lane. Present. Council McCauley. Here. Councilor Preston. Present. Wonderful, thank you. Remote. Councilor Vogel. Present. Councilor Wallace. Present. Timely. Councilor Wright. Here. Councilor Zeed. Here. Councilor Cameron. Here. Councilor Dunyu. Present. Councilor Khan. Present. Council President Shan. Present. We have 11 present. Present, one remote. All right, late files. There may be a record number of late files for this meeting. Um, Ordinance 119 is uh, amending Chapter 13 on Plummer Ave restricted parking. Actually, the first five are related to Plummer Ave safety zone. That's Ordinance uh, 120, drop off zone. Ordinance 121, the uh, <coughs> safety zone revision itself. Order 373 is a crosswalk. Order 374 is the safety zone plan itself. There's an application for a block party, Barton Street, uh, August 27th. There's an application for a classic car tour coming through Newburyport, Saturday, June 16th, 10 a.m. for an hour and a half July. in the NRA East block. We have application 95 for the artist shanty program Waterfront East Park. We have an application of uh, appointment rather of Richard S. Max Tilson, one Boston way to the Board of Health until 8 31, 2025. The next two are related. We have appointments 334, emergency preamble allowing the appointment in one reading of John P. Gavin <coughs> to the sergeant as sergeant in the report police department. We have um, application 96 is fill a boot by the uh, New Report Fire Department on August 4th, 5th, and 6th, Market Square. And we have Ordinance 122, proposed zoning amendment for the fire stations. Motion uh, to waive the rules and accept the late files. Second. Okay. Roll call. It's a roll call for waiving the rules. Accept the late files. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zee? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. And Councilor Shan. Thank you. All right. Public comment. So I'll let the clerk go and pick up the board from the board from the door. And for those in the attendees on Zoom, please raise your virtual hand and I'll allow you to speak. Please do so now so I know how many people will be speaking. If you don't raise your hand prior to uh, the clerk coming back with the board, I will assume there are no virtual folks who are looking to have public comment tonight. All right. Seeing no virtual hands, we'll bring it back inside. We have two folks for public comment. Public comment. First person is Jacob Maha. There you go. <laughs> Good evening, council members, 
My name is Jacob Majahad. I live out on Plum Island. I've lived in this town all my life. And one of the biggest benefits I've had living here is the help I've gone through school and outside of school in regards to my disabilities when I was younger. I had very severe Tourette's and uh, more severe uh, issues with dealing with my autism, which thankfully I've had a great handle on growing up and currently. I believe that I can help this community a lot by joining the Newburyport Commission on Disabilities because not only is it personally um, very, um, I can't remember the word, but I think you get what I'm saying. Absolutely. I will take this duty up as a job and I'll understand that even though it's volunteer, that doesn't mean I'll be doing it at my leisure. I'll make room in my personal and work life, depending on the issue being talked about in this committee, on this commission. And I will put in the effort, just in, as in with uh, housework, as in with my employment, as in anything else I do in my life to get the tasks done that I are assigned to me or that need to be gone done. And I will take the initiative to make sure that whatever comes on to it as an issue will have a fair uh, and impartial assessment by myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it. Wow. I think come work for me. All right. Second on our list is Jane Snow. Oh my goodness, that's hard to follow when it's done so elegantly. Um, he's put the pressure on, that's for sure. Um, Jane Snow, 9 Coffin Street. Um, I want to thank you all for the, all the hard work that you've been doing on the park, the market landing. I know that you've all spent hours and the administration has spent hours trying to figure out how we're going to put this penny over here and this five cents over here and come out with a beautiful park. Um, and I appreciate all that you've done. I just have one thought that I would like you to consider. Um, there was a trust fund by the, a gentleman by Mr. Roy. I would love to see us keep some of that money in the trust fund so that once the park is up and running, we would have um, a fund where we could help to pay to keep it beautiful. It's, we, we do these beautiful projects and then money gets tight and then we don't have the money to keep it as gorgeous as we would like. So that's just my little side thought. And if you can find a way to wiggle that into the budget, wonderful. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. All right. Mayor's comment. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm supposed to tell you that I'm happy to be here tonight at the most convenient city council meeting of the year. Um, and according to my chief of staff, it's because it's 7-Eleven. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, I want to congratulate uh, Sergeant John Gavin and his family who are out uh, in the hall and coming in soon. I'm so excited about this promotion, and I cannot wait to see what he does in the role. Uh, from finance, uh, Georgia Kualuras is retiring on July 15th after 30 years in the treasurer's office. So I just wanted to wish congratulations to Georgia and thank her for her many years of service to the city. And we are currently working with HR to fill this position in the coming weeks. Uh, I just wanted to send out a quick thank you to the Harbor Master, Paul Hogg, and his staff uh, for all their hard work so far this summer. Uh, the river has been, uh, you know, it's never been busier, particularly on the weekends. And uh, this has not been an easy start uh, to the season with another tragic accident that happened last night. So I just wanted to send a, a kind of a shout out to the, to the Harbor Master and, and their crew for really just, you know, being on call 24-7 and doing a, a wonderful job, um, you know, day in and day out with a very busy river. Uh, department head appointments. Uh, tonight in your packet you're going to see reappointments for the Human uh, Resources Director uh, Donna Drellick and Planning Director Andy Port. I have thoroughly enjoyed getting to know these two department heads over the past six months and I'm excited to offer them this opportunity to continue in these roles and serve Newburyport. 
Uh, the Riverfront Music Festival, uh, as a reminder, the 92.5 The River is holding their Riverfront Music Festival once again in Newport this year on July 23rd, beginning at 12 p.m. This event is a huge effort, and I wanted to thank our public safety, public services, parking, and board and health employees, among others, for all their work and to make sure that this event is held successfully. Uh, the Greater New Report Chamber of Commerce, Commerce has also worked hard to help make this a regional draw that will benefit the city's businesses, and we appreciate everyone's hard work in keeping this event safe and fun for all. Uh, board of Health, uh, I have submitted resident Dr. Richard Max Tilson for the opening on the Board of Health, which is in your packet tonight, for a first reading. Uh, he formerly served on the Board of Health in North Andover and is a physician in Lowell and Lawrence. Um, and I also I want to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Sam Marabi for his years of service to the Board of Health, uh, particularly for all his hard work uh, he has performed with the rest of the board this past uh, few years staring us through this pandemic. Thank you, Dr. Marabi. Uh, from the health department, we do have another uh, COVID vaccine and booster clinic coming up on 714 uh, at the Senior Center from 2 to 4 p.m. Uh, this is for ages three and above. Uh, so if you haven't got that booster shot yet, we still have time to get it this month at the Senior Center. Uh, sidewalk plan. Uh, the street paving is officially concluded for the year with 23 streets getting finished. We're now moving on to sidewalks. Uh, we met this week to look at the list of sidewalks we are targeting for this coming year. We are working with engineering on streets that will need redesign in-house, and then we will work on finalizing the list to be shared uh, not only with you here in the council, but also the public. Uh, 59 Low Street in NYS, and I, I will also add Brown School Gym uh, to this. Um, no really new announcements here. We're still working with uh, EGA Architects. We have finalized the design concept for 59 Low Street, and the next step will be working on a cost estimate. So the idea is in probably two to three weeks, we'll come to the council with the design, the design concept and estimate costs for 59 Low Street, but then also the findings on uh, the Brown School Gym. Okay. Uh, Plum Island dredging project, unfortunately I have no uh, news on that as well. The Army Corps of Engineers are still going through the two bids they received for the dredge project, and so I will pass along any updates once we know a little bit more. Uh, from the library, we have hired a new assistant head librarian, uh, Jessica Atherton, has accepted the position and she officially starts on 725. Uh, Jessica was an internal, uh, internal candidate and we are excited to have her working alongside our new head librarian, whose first day was today, Sarah Kelso. So congratulations to Jessica. We're excited for her to uh, start this new chapter. Finally, I want to bring up the operational improvement study. Um, the operational improvement study com uh, completed by Community Paradigm is in your packet tonight. There are a number of recommended moves in order to improve the efficiency of the city government, and we will be considering how best to implement uh, some of them. Uh, in line with the report, we initiated a personnel move in the Parks Department last week and presented a severance to Parks Director Lisa Reed. We will be submitting a full reorganization plan to City Council at an August meeting, along with any equitable uh, budget transfers. This personnel move is the first step. The intent is to move parks as a division under the Department of Public Services with Mike Hennessy as our parks foreman and his crew reporting up to DPS Director Tony Fanari and DPS Director Jamie Tuclo. Uh, I just want to personally thank Lisa Reed for her many years of service to New Report. Um, I've had the I've known Lisa a long time, and I've had the pleasure of working with her. Uh, I, was on the, I was a parks commissioner in 2008 to 2011 when Lisa was a parks, park admin, and I got to work with her quite a bit. Uh, she's always been just an incredibly strong advocate for our 26 parks here in New Report, and uh, in this, we've seen a lot of accomplishments uh, under her as parks director. Uh, I am confident, though, that this new arrangement will allow us to continue to provide superior service to New Report's parks and make effective use of all city resources. And I am happy to take some questions if you have any. Councilors, uh, I see Councilor Lane's hand. Any um, update on the Phillips Drive project when it's going to start? I don't have one, but I can I can look into that and get back to you. Thanks. We're still we're still in a good spot with with uh, Phillips Drive. Councilor Vogel. Thank you, Council President. Um, Mayor, as you probably assume, I have a number of questions um, regarding the um, reorganization effort. Sure. So I, I wonder if you could clear up just a, first of all, just a couple of items. So the email that you sent out to all of us, sort of the whole world, um, you indicated that there was um, a significant recommendation that you'll be implementing right away. And um, that was moving the Parks Department under the Department of Public Services, so as you mentioned during your update. Um, and then, the question that I have is then that was followed a little bit later by a, um, a press release that um, sort of states a lot of the same things, only it only says that you're going to su suggest or consider these moves, 
but you made no mention at all in the press release that you had actually were implementing that specific um, item. So that, that's one question that I have. And then probably uh, can, I, can I ask what the question is? So, so the question was is, is as exactly as why the press release press release didn't mention the fact that you had actually gone ahead and implemented that change when you had addressed it all to us internally, but it didn't go out to the press. And then as, just to continue on with that, um, I know that you received a notice today from, uh, or an email in answer to the question from, um, to KP Law regarding how reorganizations in the city work, specifically under the organization of uh, agencies, sections 5.1 of our city charter. And um, just, just for the public edification, if I may, I would like to include a little bit in that, if it's all right, if I read that out. It says, the organization of the city into operating agencies for the provision of services and the administration of the government may be accomplished only through the administration, the administrative order filed by this, with the city council by the mayor. So as of yet, we haven't received an order from you sure. for this reorganization. Um, you may from time to time prepare and submit um, the order to establish an orderly, efficient, and convenient way to conduct business in the city. And then the administrative order shall be accom accomplished um, by a message of the uh, mayor which explains the benefits expected to ensure, uh, in, in, ensue and, and advises the city council how it's going to, you know, what requirements are needed, insertions, revisions, repeal of otherwise existing ordinances, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty comprehensive order. Absolutely. Yet my question, sir, is that you went ahead and implemented a change and we don't even have an order in front of us. You actually let go, you actually fired the director of let, parks. Can I, can I just director, correct you? I didn't, I didn't fire I, the I'm parks sorry, director. excuse me. Okay, you actually severed or removed that position yeah. and moved and moved the parks department to, to DPS. No, that hasn't happened yet. All, all I've done is removed the parks director position. Okay, you moved the parks director position. Um, okay, so that so that that didn't that that brings me to the the question, because you're, what you say is there's one significant recommendation that I will be implementing right away. I'm moving the parks department under the Department of Public Services. I feel this puts the city in a better position to serve the 26 parks, so forth and so on. Unfortunately, this means we will be eliminating the parks director position. So Lisa, Lisa's not here. She's been let, is that? Well, no? she's, still, she's still working for New She's still yes. working for us. Yes. Okay, so she's still working for us. And you either have or have not put parks under DPS. That is correct. What, have or have not? You have? All we've done so far in this plan, so just to answer all your questions, I guess, at once. So, um, you know, as far as the press release, that press release was specific to the report that was getting released into the city council packet. Um, I typically wouldn't comment on personnel issues through a press release. Um, I think in just respect for uh, the, uh, the person, in this case, getting released. Uh, the second part of that is, you know, Councilor, President Councilor Shand uh, put forth a opinion towards KP Law, which we received today. Did everyone get to see that? Councilor I did not forward it to okay. everybody. So you bring up the, you know, 5-1. 5-1. So we did get an opinion from KP Law, which they said the only thing that can institute 5-1 is this, if I actually presented a plan for reorganization to the city council. An order. Uh, an order, right. And so all I have done by, uh, you know, again, moving the parks director position or removing it is institute uh, section 3-4, article 3 of the city charter. Um, I'm happy to share this with all of you. I, I just assumed the pr president was going to do that. Uh, so I don't know what oh, else sorry, you would like no, me to say on it that. It says one of the recommend, one of the significant recommendations will you'll be implementing right away. You're moving the parks under the Department of Public Services. Is that you don't consider that um, applicable to the Section 51 of the? I do, uh, but I didn't I didn't do that yet. So all I've done, and so what w the opinion that we got from KP Law is by me making this first initial move, that doesn't trigger 5-1. All I've done is, is made a personnel move. Okay, so you so made the plan is, So the plan is going forward, obviously, you know, through the charter, we're going to 
present a reorganization plan of parks moving under DPS sometime in August. Uh, right now, you know, I've got my Kennedy here tonight. Parks hasn't changed as far as operation, operationally today. Um, they're still going about working, and we're going to use this time in the next few weeks, um, you know, to again put that plan together and then, then present it to, um, you know, City Council. I will say, you know, we got this a report initially on uh, June 7th, and I remember sharing it with, with Council President at that time. So we've been working on this for a number of weeks now. This isn't something we, we've taken lightly. Uh, you know, again, this anytime you're talking about removing a position in the city, uh, you know, you have to really carefully weigh those those options. And again, at the end of the day, I think we're we're going to put parks in a much better position to to operate more uh, efficiently and effectively moving forward. Yeah, I, Councillor Vogel, can you sum it up? Sit down. Please. Hmm. Did I did I not answer any of the questions, Councilor? Um, no, I didn't quite get the answer that I was. I, I didn't quite get that it. Never happened. But so. you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be happy to submit it to you via email. Okay. Be very specific, and maybe we can make some progress that way. Sure, and I would definitely suggest that maybe that opinion from KP Law gets circulated throughout the council that we got today. I think that answers everyone's questions. Councilor Khan. Yeah, great. Thank you, Mayor, um, for the update. Uh, just a quick question, follow up on that. Did I hear that the parks director position is, is gone though, right? It's, the, yes. So my only right. question on that is on our ordinances, you know, I just wanna make sure the timing of it because we do have a revolving fund that has a certain amount of money that can only be kind of managed by, or kind of, um, it's managed by the parks director. So we do need to make some codification um, sure. changes. So whenever we could get, the sooner we can do that, the better than this body can act on any changes knowing that we no longer have a parks director position. Absolutely. So that's all just keeping us surprised of that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yep. No, thank you. Further questions, counselors? All right, thank you, Mayor. All right, you all have a wonderful meeting. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. All right, so now I would like to... Uh... Uh, Council President? Yes. Uh, I'd Kelly. like to uh, ask um, that we um, go out of order a little bit and we uh, I would ask for approval for appointment 334, the uh, emergency preamble, as well as uh, the appointment of John Gavin, Sergeant of Newburyport. I, I motion for approval. Second. Uh, the, and the reason being for the emergency preamble is we have a, man, we have a, a manning shortage right now, uh, and uh, getting this individual on the force as quickly as possible would help us. We've got a number of key events coming up. Uh, and um, um, manpower is critical to all of these. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, roll call. Roll call on the motion motion for uh, taking appointment, both the emergency preamble and appointment 334 uh, out of order next on the agenda. Uh, Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Thank you. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councillor Donahue? Yes. Councillor Kahn? Yes. And Councillor Shan? Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve the uh, appointment 334. Second. Do we have to do the Discussion. preamble first? With the emergency preamble? Motion to collectively, collectively <laughs> approve the emergency. Motion to approve collectively the emergency preamble of 334 in the appointment of 334. Thank you. Thank Second. you. Second. Roll call. Roll call on the approval uh, both for the emergency preamble and the appointment of John P. Gavin. Council Lane? Yes. Council McCauley? Yes. Council Preston? Yes. Council Vogel? Yes. Council Wallace? Yes. Council Wright? Yes. Council Z? Yes. Council Cameron? Yes. Council Dunyu? Yes. Council Khan? Yes. And Council Shan? Yes. Terrific. All right. Are we ready, Council President? So, if I might, uh, at this point we will do um, what sometimes we do without the council, but it's much um, more formal and appropriate uh, to do it with all of you here. So um, it's really quite a simple uh, process. We'll make more of it than need be. Um, we go through a swearing in, and then um, Sergeant Gavin at that point would sign the book, which is the book of history. That's the book you need to sign to go back in time. And without any further ado, shall we, President? Go right ahead. You would like to rate? How are you? Good. So you want to raise your right hand and just follow me. I, John P. Gavin. I, John P. Gavin. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will 
and impartially discharge, and, impartially discharge and, perform the duties of and perform the duties of a sergeant for the Newburyport Police Department, a sergeant for the Newburyport Police Department to which I have been appointed, to which I have been appointed in accordance with, in accordance with the, Constitution of the, United States, the Constitution of the United States, the laws of the Commonwealth, the, laws of the, Commonwealth, the charter and ordinances Charter and ordinances of the city of Newburyport New to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Terrific. Thank you so much. At, at this point, Sergeant, I think you're going to be pinned. Yeah. You're going to be pinned by his son, Josh. Son, Josh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. if you would. Okay. And more importantly, the big book of history right here. You're going to uh, date it, sign it, your address, and you can just put Sergeant right there. Okay. Or if you're like me, SGT. I'm not sure how to spell it. What's today, the 11th? Today is the 11th. Go to med school with that signature? Yeah. Perfect. Congratulations. Thank Thanks, John. Thank you. Congratulations. Cheers. Thank you. Free to stay for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it for a moment. Thank you. Two family. Congratulations to all of you. Congrats. Congratulations. Hey, thanks. Take care. Hey, there's so much meeting left. She's right. <laughs> Three babies. She's got a little baby. All right. Congrats, Tom. Right. So, thank hey, you all for good. How are you? that out of order. <laughs> See you. <laughs> I was sneaking out, Byron. <laughs> did you look for all the right, official so in the corner? <laughs> Clerk Jones, moving right along. The, the consent, consent agenda, agenda this evening consists of the approval of the minutes for the January, uh, June 27th meeting. There are three communications. Communication uh, 422 is a mayor's memo on community paradigm, the report much discussed. That's to go to general government and committee of the whole. Application 91 is the 10th annual car show, August 11th, 5 to 8 p.m., to go to public safety. Application uh, 92 is the uh, A-frame for Charleston and Coco at Pleasant State Public Safety. There are two transfers, transfer 135, um, Pay parking fund 10,000 to in street improvement, same amount to go to BNF. Transfer 136, 40 hour zoning incentive, 17,300 to go to enclosed landscape trailer, same amount, budget and finance. There's one appointment, 332, Biff Bouse, 6 Iona Ave, Historic Commission until 8 1 2025.
That's to go to uh, planning and development. Following items are removed from their respective committees, budget and finance. Order 356, 371, and 354, general government, appointment 330, and order 330, 366, planning and development, appointments 326, 327, 329, 331, ordinance 111, order 358, and communication 415, public safety, applications 88, 89, and 90. And that is the consent agenda. Councilor Zeig. Motion to amend um, to insert the late files with the exception of the uh, emergency and the uh, 334, EP and 334, into the consent agenda with their respective committee uh, assignments as shown. Second. Roll call. Oh, sorry, Councilor Ross. Uh, motion to not put in the consent agenda, order 373 and 374. Okay, yeah. So we're removing three, 373, orders 373, 6, 374. We're just taking those out. We'll deal with them when we get to orders. Any other amendments? All right, roll call. <coughs> Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes, yes, McCauley. Yeah. Preston, yes. <laughs> Councilor Vogel. I think so, yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donio. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Motion to approve as amended. Second. Roll call. Round the, ball, round the horn. Amended. Approve as amended. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Or yes. Councilor Vogel. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. And Councilor Shan? Yes. Thank you. Point of order, uh, may I, Council President? I thought we could make any consent agenda item removals without having it amended. Just want to make sure from a procedural perspective. Thank you. Yes, you can remove it actually unilaterally. Yeah. But, but the amendment was to add those other items. Oh, got the it, removal, got it. Removal, it didn't require a vote, but the added. Right. Okay, got it. Thank you. All right, so mayor's update. Motion to receive and file. Second. Roll call. Council Elaine. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Council Preston. Yes. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Wallace. Yes. Council Wright. Yes. Council Zeed. Yes. Council Cameron. Yes. Council Dunyu. Yes. Council Khan. Yes. Council Shan. Thank yes. you. First reading appointments, none. Communications, transfers, and second reading appointments, none. Orders, item 14. We have the uh, Herman Roy Trust appropriation to Market Landing Park. Motion to refer to budget and finance. Second. Discussion? All right. Uh, I'm referring the order to uh, budget and finance. Council Lane? Yes. Council McCauley? Yes. Council Preston? Yes. Councilor Bogle? Yes. Council Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. And Councilor Shan? Yes. Thank you. All right. Ordinances. Wait. Wait. Point, Point of, of order. order. We yeah. have the orders we move. 373 and 374. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, make a motion 373 and 374 collectively to go to NCS. Uh, okay. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Roll call. This is on moving uh, 373, 374 to Neighborhood and City Services. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. And Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you very much. For the catch, Councilor McCauley and Wallace. All right. If I haven't missed anything else, I think we're on to ordinances. <laughs> we are. Uh, on ordinance 115, which is a second reading of an ordinance entitled Health and Sanitation. Uh, it's with respect to um, the amending noise ordinance. Motion to approve on second reading. 101. Thank you. Second. second. Roll call. Second reading of 115. 
Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. And Councilor Shan? Yes. Next ordinance. Next ordinance is coming in. It's Ordinance 118. It's amending the municipal fees. Motion to refer to budget and finance. Second. Discussion? Oh, oh Councilor Kahn. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Council President. I just want to point out, I, if folks remember, we did actually codify and move to an appendix all the municipal fees. It actually never got moved there. So that's one action. The second one is there's actually been some changes to it, and so we'll discuss in budget and finance some of the changes. But the reason you see the whole thing here is um, I think when I was looking at my paper version of all the code of ordinances, I did not see this there. So, so I think this will clean everything up. So if anyone was looking for municipal fees, they were missing. So now they're going to be in there, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kahn. Further discussion? Roll call. This is moving uh, ordinance 118, municipal fees to budget and finance. Councillor Lane? Yes. Councillor McCauley? Yes. Councillor Preston? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. And Councilor Shan? Yes. All right, moving on to committee items. Nothing in the ad hoc on economic development, and uh, I think the bulk of Market Landing Park will be discussed in budget and finance, so nothing in that one either. So, Councilor Zeed, budget and finance. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll start with a motion to approve um, Order 369, Pioneer League Gift 283650. Second. This is a gift from the Pioneer League. Um, we, we didn't have a tremendous amount of discussion, uh, but it's to go towards um, the fields there, and uh, is a specific amount and it was three to zero on committee. Just leave it at that. Okay. All right, no other discussion? Was that remove and approve? I'm sorry, yeah, motion to approve. Yes. Was it out? Second. I guess I, I don't see it on the list. It's in my minutes, so I'm sorry. Remove All right. and approve. No, it was out. I thought, I thought I had it in there, but. It's. I, was it in the top list, but not in the bottom one? I no, think so, because I don't see it in the packet. All right. It's not pressing, so I can well, motion to waive the rules and take out order 369 and also to approve it at the same time. Omnibus, please. Second. All right, roll call. Uh, Councilor Preston, you have your hand up. Yeah, uh, sorry, I was just gonna mention that I don't see it anywhere in the packet, so if, if we could just get some explanation. Yeah, like I said, we didn't have a tremendous amount of conversation. It's twenty-eight hundred dollars. Um, we've been discussing more and more how the uh, we wanted the the gifts to come through the council so we could see them. This is twenty-eight thirty-six. Um, we had uh, Director Ethan Manning was with us. Andrew was with us as well. And we and this is just basically for general upkeep of the of the Atkinson Fields. It's not for any major project or anything like that. It was general maintenance. It's to go to to the city. And this is an acceptance of the gift. I don't know if Andrew wants to add anything or Ethan is on maybe on the thing if he wants to say anything more about it. Did you, were you able to hear all that, Councilor Preston? Yes, that's fine, thank you. Okay, all right, any other questions? And my apologies, I don't know why we'll figure it out, but yeah. sorry. All right, roll call. So on the motion to remove and approve order 369. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Kahn? Yes. And Councilor Shan? Yes. Thank you. Okay, next is a motion to approve order 356-5922, loan order $3 million market landing park expansion project. Second. Um, and um, if I could, I, I will take it cumulative uh, with, with order 354 as well, which is the CPC recommendation together collectively yeah. okay thank you and that's just project nine on 354. so this is the uh this is the central waterfront park which has been the discussion of a whole committee of its own waterfront park we met as budget and finance on june 30th the ad hoc as the president mentioned met the night before on the 29th at that meeting we were presented with a um uh, updates from sasaki and that included some updates on park design and things like that and some dis and some things that they had been moving around 
It also in involved some updated cost <coughs> estimates. Um, what I'm going to do is present just the committee report and what we discussed, and then Andy Port is here, and, and he's got a couple slides. I think the president has them and uh, can just sort of summarize. <clears throat> Basically, to give you the 30,000-foot overview, the park has been discussed for many years. It's been coming into focus to some degree with the ad hoc. And the way that it sits today is essentially it's landed into three phases. So phase one is sort of the, the park proper, or the main, the main show, if you will, of the park, uh, which is closest to the water and the completion of the, the rail trail extension that goes through. Uh, the president refers to that as the backbone of the park. So that's that aspect of it. And um, then there's phase two, which is parking lots. That's not quite in focus yet, but that's phase two is to make the, some of the improvements that they've been talking about, trees and what have you. And then phase three would be the restroom building, uh, which has been talked about quite a bit as well. So this, these two orders, order 356 is an actual bond order for $3 million with CPC as the, as the uh, backing uh, source of funds. And 354 is just the accompanying recommendation. So I'm taking them together because they're really, it's illogical to separate them. They, they are this, effectively the same thing. Um, we did have a, a good amount of discussion in bu budget um, to, you know, on, in addition to what was talked about in the waterfront park. And I would say that the majority of the discussion centered around um, you know, what are the phases and what do you sort of get for, for this phase one out of the money that you are appropriating. And I just want to make clear that $3 million is not the total amount that's anticipated for phase one. Phase one is actually anticipated to be approximately $4.4 .4 million per Sasaki's numbers. And that is $3 million here, $1 million from the Herman Roy Trust Fund, which you heard a little bit about tonight. And that just got referred to budget and finance. And then also uh, an application to, to the state for a PARC PARC grant. Is it 1C or 2Cs? Whatever it is, 1C. Uh, which would be an additional $400,000 potentially. So three plus one plus 400 gives you your 4.4. And um, that is the total amount. Uh, we discussed that, and I think, again, I'll, I'll leave that to Director Port to kind of go through more of the detail uh, there in terms of what, what they're presenting as, as what phase one really is. And there are some graphics that will do much better justice than I can trying to verbally explain it. In terms of, um, in terms of uh, discussion in committee, uh, we did amend it, and the amended version is in your packet. Um, it, it wasn't 100, we weren't 100% sure exactly what final modifications it would and wouldn't be included in phase one. There's a significant amount that's being hoped for uh, through donations and things like that, so-called so park amenities. So uh, the amendment in committee was to insert some language that would say, you know, the $3 million is authorized subject to sort of the final plan being made available to the council for approval. Final meaning, you know, the actual final plan. I, I do want to note that Sasaki is pretty far in the design. I, I want to say they're north of 75% completion. And that was a big part of the reason on the 29th. So it's not that the park is going to change dramatically, but more just sort of um, sharpening on what that, that money is going to go to. So that has been placed in as a condition. The finance director was with us, and so that, that language was discussed in committee and didn't meet any resistance. It is a bond. There are, we checked all the rules. There are no rules to waive because we've met all the timelines that exist. Uh, so we passed the amendment 3 to 0. In the end, um, it is coming to you with an, an approve, a recommendation to approve as amended 2 to 1. And I was the dissenting vote. So maybe with that, I can leave it to Andy. Uh, to sure. maybe give you some more detail. That might thank, be you. Uh, thank you. Thank uh, you, Councilor Zeed. Uh, as Councilor Zeed mentioned, I, uh, apologies if I, I know I sent these slides today. So um, at any rate, there's a, there are a couple of graphics I'd provided. I'm not sure if the Council President has them available, but um, I'm happy to, to follow up if that's necessary uh, with anyone. The uh, presentation that the ad hoc committee got, uh, and uh, all the councilors I think have hopefully seen this by now, um, the schematic plan for Market Landing Park does, as the Councilor mentioned, uh, include for phase one the primary park component or the backbone, where our intention is to do uh, all the ways, the pedestrian ways, the shared use path, and the east and west wings of the park. Um, as the council mentioned, uh, postponing some of the work on the parking lot, again, just because of project costs. Uh, and the visitor center uh, restroom facility would also be a second phase, a third phase, uh, so to speak, for the project. Um, the uh, schematic plan that I was going to reference, it really just illustrates that. Um, and as the council mentioned, uh, what we got directed from, from the last time we met with the council uh, on this was to work further with Sasaki. Uh, and the, the slides we're speaking just a little bit to this point is, uh, 
Um, Sasaki helped us by looking at the higher increases in, in, in numbers that we're seeing in the market to look at where we could shave our you know pencil, so to speak, pull out a few items that could be donated, uh, things like the swing trellis you know items, um, to try to do uh, as many of those things as we could uh, with additional funds that are donated from the local community um, to try to extend the city's dollars as far as possible in completing the, the backbone, if you will, of the park or the ground level um, site improvements. So uh, with that in mind, as the council mentioned, we're having Sasaki refine that um, the detail for that plan. Uh, there'll be a full blown uh, design for the entire park, the entire parking area, and the visitor center area. However, we will be doing it in phases. And so that plan for phase one would include all that backbone. Um, and then we will add what we call during bidding ad alts. Uh, so we have ads or alternates uh, that we do, in this case, a lot of ads. Um, and if we get additional funds for those other items, which I, I think we will, or hopefully will, um, we would then pay the contractor with those additional funds to do those additional items, meaning things like the swings, uh, could be some benches, maybe some trees in a, you know, one of the grove areas, um, things like that, so that we get as much as possible out of this with the city's funds, with the state funds. Um, this vote you're having tonight, hopefully on this, is timely because we're applying for a state parks grant, um, and the hope is that in showing the state that we've got um, significant funds available for this project, they will be very inclined, hopefully, to recognize the benefits of contributing 400000 to our park project right in the central waterfront. I think it's um, it's a good project for them to fund, um, and it'd be good for them to hear, obviously, the council's support for the funding for the, the project. I'm happy to elaborate on any of that and, and share with you any of the, the slides or graphics you know, further, but um, whatever you'd like. Go ahead, I'm, I'm in the Zoom. If I can share the presentation he was referring right. to if you, wanna, if you wanted me to. Okay. Thank you. And so uh, what you're going to see here is there are a couple of slides that Sasaki had presented. Um, the first one is really just a updated schematic rendering of the park itself. Um, and that's just a color illustrative map. It's um, the, the council mentioned we have 75% design plans. That's really 75% progress towards plans and specifications for bid. Um, and so um, this plan is a illustrative layout of the entire park. So thank you. I can go up to this first slide, or you just tell them this is uh, this is slide one. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, so that's the first slide. Uh, that's just showing the overall layout. Uh, you'll see the one area that has not been updated uh, in great detail is where the building is. As you know, uh, recently we had some discussions about shifting that building footprint a little bit further to the east. Um, so with the exception of that little area right there, this plan represents the park improvements. And as you can see, the uh, the east and west. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. If you go to the next slide, um, what you'll see is this is a this schematic is a from Sasaki from last a uh, little earlier. I should say last year, maybe late last year, um, we were estimating wings of the park uh, so we could break it down by area, recognizing that we may not have enough funds to do the whole thing at once. Um, so at that time, we were trying to think about it in areas. Um, that was the you know, schematic to show how the, we might break that out. Uh, in the next slide, uh, you'll see that Sasaki actually updated that a bit for us, looking at the cost estimate. And these are all in the slide uh, presentation, the detailed slide presentation that uh, is posted with the ad hoc materials. Um, but this is basically uh, an estimation of what phase one would include, uh, what phase two of the parking areas would include, and then phase three, the visitor building. Um, we are, I would note, for the Ferry Wharf Way area, uh, which is uh, just to the left of phase two parking um, <clears throat> on the east lot. Um, we are trying to make sure that that pedestrian way is fully completed in the lawn space, and that's one reason for trying to carve out as much as we can of the um, amenities that could be donated. Um, so that way, as the council mentioned, we're trying to get as much of the bones of the park as possible so that that does not need to be built later. It's really just the site amenities at that point that could be added if, if anything is a, is a gap. Uh, in the next slide, um, and feel free to stop me if there's any questions, but. Um, <clears throat> this is just a little bit refinement. As, as I mentioned there in phase two, uh, you'll see that by Fair Wharf Way, they had estimated possibly carving out some of the landscaping in that area. Uh, we'd like to obviously include that uh, to get as much ground as possible in the backbone or base of the, the bid, uh, but then uh, do more um, <clears throat> of the site amenities beyond that if possible. But that was one area there during the last presentation as we were looking at the numbers that Sasaki thought we could fill that gap in the, uh, in the, the uh, budget. Uh, the next slide. Uh, <clears throat> this is a little too de detailed to read here, but it was, it was explained more further in detail to the committee uh, and the councilors who were there. And, um, and as was mentioned by Councilor Z tonight, the total project cost, which is over on the bottom on the right, uh, is about 10 million, you know, and some change. Um, that includes uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three, including the visitor center. Um, obviously, for the park improvements themselves, and that's what this uh, grant application uh, that we're um, looking to apply for later this week uh, would be for. That's only for the park improvements in phase one, so it does not 
include the visitor building, does not include the parking lot areas, um, and as the council mentioned. Um, one thing I would note, if I could, just to make sure it's clear for the record, the, um, <clears throat> the CPC's recommendation for Project 9 um, also happened to include the recommendation of carrying $250,000 uh, from last year's appropriation to give an extension on that time frame. Um, and I just wanted to, I don't know if that's, uh, just assume that that's been incorporated because it's referenced in the CPC's vote. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure that was uh, hopefully clear. Um, thank you. And uh, again, uh, if there's any further questions, I'm happy to answer them. The, the last two slides are really just illustrating um, potential donor items. These are some of the things that Sasaki had, had talked about breaking out. We're going to try to break out, a little, like I said, a little bit further so we can get a little bit further with the base bid. Um, and that's just a listing of some of them with some ballpark numbers for uh, what it would cost for those items. And we'll use that for the purpose of both fundraising as well as evaluating um, the, the sort of ad alt uh, in the bid uh, later this year or this winter. Thank you, Director Port. Questions from the councilors? Councilor Z. Um, I, I just um, wanted, I just thought of a few things that re reminded me that also came up. So uh, drainage did come up in the discussion, so I think that's probably merits a little bit of discussion at this. This does include a, a drainage culvert, uh, which is considered a, a central artery, if you will, for drainage to exit the downtown, and that would be expected to uh, empty basically the market square uh, basin, I don't know what else to call it, but the bowl into that thing, and then it would go into the river. So that did come up in discussion, and that the city engineer has been a part of those conversations, and they continue to be a, a part of those conversations as well. And then I, I just thought I, I meant the, both of these were two to one, just uh, even though I'm doing them collectively here, we did do them separately in committee. So. Could I supplement the councilor's comment there? Uh, on the drainage project, uh, that's a separate CIP project. Uh, the intention here as a council mentioned is to do this at the same time, so we don't uh, do the park improvements and then have to dig it up for the culvert that drains from Market Square. So uh, the same engineer has worked with an engineer we have from Sasaki, uh, so we could combine the efforts here, look at the, the work in the total. Um, and so this project would mobilize, do the culvert work, do the park improvements and the Ferry Wharf Way pedestrian improvements over on top of that, uh, and then the park improvements on the Riverside, so that we would not need to dig those things up later on. So you may be seeing, you know, in the, in the coming months, a CIP um, allocation towards that, and that's intended to uh, allow us to do those projects simultaneously, so that we don't have to dig anything up later on. Thank you. Please stand, Councillor Lane, when you're asked when asked the question. Thank you. You're up. Um, how much parking is total lost on us? Uh, I believe there's about 80 or 90 spaces that are lost. Uh, we're waiting for an updated estimate from Sasaki, but it's about 80 or 90 spaces, uh, I think, from today's, from where we are today. Okay. And the, and the culverts, when, how do those play into the infrastructure downtown? Have they evaluated that in terms of if they interrupt something or... Sure. Uh, I, I can't speak to it in great detail. I defer to the city engineer, but um, this particular project is only really the large culvert, about five or six feet wide, uh, between two buildings that are there, the, the concrete pedestrian walkway that's there today in between the two of the buildings. Uh, if you go out to Water Street right at Market Square, uh, that pedestrian crossing, uh, if you follow that concrete sidewalk through, it's going to go right through there. Uh, we would dig a trench, put the five to six foot wide culvert in there run it through the site all the way out to essentially where the, uh, the berm meets the bulkhead. Um, and it would only do that work. There might be some other improvements that need to be done in the downtown area, but the intention here is to try to capture anything that gets in the bottom of Market Square and send it out to the river as quickly as possible so that it doesn't flood some of the businesses that have had that problem over years uh, during heavy, intense storms. Further questions? Councilor Z. Thank you. I just wanted to offer my, my thoughts and to why I dissented in committee. So, my overall feeling is I feel like every two weeks I stand here and really what I'm asking for is modesty. And so I, my biggest problem with this project is this doesn't feel modest at this rate, at this price for this phase. Um, I've been on the ad hoc well before we engaged Sasaki and all that stuff. So I've been along for the ride. For that reason, it gives me tremendous heartburn to be put in a position to vote no. But I didn't feel like when we started, uh, particularly when we engaged Sasaki, one thing I was harping on, and those who were around hopefully would attest, was trying to put a budgetary figure on it. And at the time, the, the closest we could sort of come to was the total project would be five-ish million dollars. And we actually wrote that into the order, and it was, it was assumed to be sort of a loose number, but it was, it was assumed to put some kind of a ballpark. Now, of course, in the intervening time, there's been inflation, et cetera, but as you heard from the director, and you can see on the slide, we're at 10.856 and growing. Every, every iteration seems to be another million dollars to do the entire project. So we're at $11 million. So what I asked for in committee and what I would stand for and ask here is 
I want to know what I can get for, say, a $2.5 million investment at this phase, understanding that it will be less than what we're asking for here at $4.4 million. So modesty is a big question for me. We have all these other parks that we say we want to take care of, and perennially we have that discussion. Second one is um, I'm extremely concerned. I, I would echo the public comment, actually. The, the maintenance just continues to be mystifying to me. So we have a waterfront trust now that we have a $70,000 a year agreement with to take care of this much. Now we're going to add more park to it. We haven't resolved any of the questions about transferring this to the trust and so forth, which I'm willing to accept as being incomplete at this time. At the same time, whether we transfer the land immediately to the trust or we don't, there's maintenance that begins the day the ribbon cutting occurs. And it's not clear to me where that's going to come from. As a corollary in discussions in committee, we did talk about you know, that trust fund, which again is its own order, but that has about 1.3 in it. And, we're, and the ask right now is to bring a million out of it. I had hoped that we could leave something in there and just live off the, live off the, uh, the interest, so to say, especially in a time when actually interest may become more material. And that could have been, that could be a sensible compromise, in my opinion, if we didn't ask for as much. And these two things go hand in hand. I'm, I mean, it's simple math. If we're going to reduce the total spend, then the project has to come with it. The third uh, major concern I have is that the, the drainage that I uh, talked about and, and the director mentioned also briefly, that is a separate endeavor in a sense. And in the slide we saw from Sasaki, there's a need for roughly $700,000 to fund that, 693 I think to be exact. But there is, yes, it's a CI pre-project and that it, it's in, on a piece of paper in the CIP, but it does not have any identified funding source. We've, we've just basically completed free cash for the year. We, we approved much, not all, uh, in our last meeting. So where will we come up with 700K to, to fund that? And, and I think one thing I certainly agree with is if we, if we don't do it and we end up tearing things up, that, that's silly. That's, that's an ineffectual way to do things, and I don't support it. So drainage is a big question. I think everybody is attuned to downtown apparently being you know, a big mess in terms of uh, everything, electrical, gas, drainage, et cetera. So it'd be nice to have a, a way to see where that, that's 700 is not something that'd be easy to come up with. We also have the bulkhead hanging in the balance to complete. Um, the, the next one is um, the CPC. So another area of concern I have is that this is part of a broader raft of requests out of the CPC. Many we have now handled, but we have the big ones left. This is one of those big ones. The other big bond we have is the Bartlett Mall. Um, which we've already approved 216K for design, and now we're sitting on a bond of roughly 2.8. And then we have just a straight request for $571,000 for Atkinson Common. And my, my, my concern was that, you know, is this draining CPC too much? Obviously, we make these commitments for 15 years plus to pay the mortgage, and this would roughly half our CPC uh, uh, allocation every year. Um, and, and I just think that it's, it's a lot. It's a lot to take on at one point. So um, for, this, uh, for these reasons, I, I really voted no. And, and probably if I really took out the biggest ones, it would be uh, just I need a plane for maintenance. It's the same thing I'll be asking for on the Bartlett Mall, you know, how we'll make sure we can run whatever we build. Because it's always great the day you open it. And then what? Um, and then the, the drainage one is really big, because I think it, it would be penny wise and pound foolish to, to do them. Uh, in, in, out, of, out of order. So that's why I voted no on both of these. If I had my druthers, I would go to Sasat just to be clear about what I would do so that it's not just, you know, here's a no vote and there's no solution. My solution is I would go to Sasaki and I would say, I would like to know at two and a half million, I'd like actually like three price points and just to show me what I could get. And it may involve shrinking that map or I think they've already done a good job of taking out as much of the amenities as they can. So there's not much fat left on that bone. But if, the, if, if we really focused on the water side and the bulkhead side, and maybe that's what we could do to bring the cost down. But I, I do think residents are going to struggle um, seeing $5 million go into that and wondering um, you know, why their neighborhood park isn't being you know, upgraded in, in a similar way. And then just the added strain of, of maintenance will be something that they will feel. And the final thing I want to say is just that the argument has come up several times that this doesn't impact taxpayers because CPC is different. It's not taxes, right? So sure, you know, in the technical sense, CPC is over here and, and taxes are over here. But that maintenance is going to catch up any way you look at it. So it's true CPC is more restrictive in what you can spend it on, and this certainly is an allowable expense. But there's just no way we won't be facing budgetary changes as a result in the year when this is completed. And that might be next year or maybe the year after. So 
I would really like to have driven more compromise. It wasn't the will of the committee, um, but that's my view, and I, I felt I owed it to explain why. Thank you. Councilor McCauley and then Councilor Kahn. Uh, I'll defer if you. Oh, no, you okay. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Council President. Um, uh, I, I will support this uh, measure uh, because I think it's a good first step. Um, and, and I like the fact that it's funded by CPA uh, because it doesn't uh, impact the operational uh, uh, tax base that we usually have from, uh, from our real estate and our homes. Um, and, it, and it is, it does send a message to, the CP, to those folks in the CPA that this is a big splash. We are making a big splash with CPA money and it will be tangible. Um, that being said, uh, $3 million is a lot of money. It's not enough to finish the park. Everyone should realize that. It's a commitment uh, that the city is making through our, our grant, uh, as well as sending a signal to the state that we're committed uh, to this program. Uh, the design in general has been done, and there's many, uh, there's, very, there's areas of commonality uh, that we can all agree to, uh, but the details are not finalized. And I, I think the ask was uh, the ask from the committee back through the planning office and the um, architect was to do more value engineering. Uh, we see it as phases. Um, and, you know, there's three phases or four phases. There might be ten phases. But, but to the councilor's point, this has spurned a larger conversation. Um, and, and I don't think the city can build a park soup to nuts on its own. Um, we, we need the community involved, and part of that is we need to, at our next um, uh, milestone with, that, with, the meeting of the, uh, with the meeting of the ad hoc, is to set apart public meetings and get this vision out to the public and start getting um, uh, the conversation going that says, listen, we've been waiting 40 years for this park. Everyone has done everything they can to bring it to this point. Um, but now we need money. Unfortunately, two years ago we needed less money, but now we need more money uh, now. And now is the time for us to be the advocates out into the marketplace, into our constituents, into our business community that says we need help rallying everyone to build this park. And that's why I'm going to vote for the $3 million because the council through via the, the CPA funds and the commitment that the citizens have made, we're going to make a stake that we're going to save $3 million, but we need more money. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McCauley. Councilor Kahn. Great. Thank you, Council President. I couldn't say it any more eloquently than the Councilor at Ward 5, but I am also going to be supporting this. And I, I completely agree with what has been said in terms of waiting for this open kind of open waterfront park. And we've heard about it for so long. And for me, it's a big testimony when we had people here, I want to even say like three or four years ago, who were advocating for this. And now we're getting there. Now, the investment, I also, I really approve the source. I do think that it's just going to be incrementally going up. But I do want to also just put in my like two cents in the sense that, yeah, I'm also going to be a public person speaking up on what I want. You know, passive park is what we were hoping for. I will completely say that anything, anything like these sculptures or other kind of, um, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, but those kind of amenities are not a priority for me. It's really just getting rid of the gravel parking lot, which is a big, big you know, thing that we will all be really grateful for, embracing the open aspect and recognizing it's not going to be done cheaply. These other pieces, which I'm not a strong advocate for, we will bring in that public engagement and really, as the previous uh, counselor said, there could be other investments made to do those pieces. So I will be 100% supporting this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Kahn. Council Wright. So, so yes, I voted um, out of committee to bring this forward. Um, I would just like to ask the ad hoc committee to be really clear about what happens in the first phase. Because we may only get one phase um, with the economic conditions that we're facing. Um, we need to be sure that, that whatever we put into the first phase is something that might have to wait five, six, seven years before we can even think about phase two or phase three. So um, if I could ask the ad hoc committee to, to keep that in mind when they start to um, look at additional phases or fine tuning the phases. So we're not left with something that's gonna be, inc that's gonna look incomplete 
for, for, for a while, yes. Thank you, Councillor Wright. That's a very good point. Well taken. Councillor Vogel. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Um, to the previous <coughs> statements, I too agree wholeheartedly. Um, eloquently, eloquently expressed. Um, so in 2003, when I started a campaign to run for city councilor and, and uh, was elected for the 2004 uh, se uh, session, um, I was recently looking at my campaign literature and that campaign literature spoke about the waterfront park. We have been at this a very, very long time. And I believe that the community is at a point of expectation. I think the, committed, the community is a point, at a point of desire. And I do hope that they will step up and appreciate what we bring forward. And to the uh, Councilor at Large's um, uh, input about taking a look at what we are going to get, I wholeheartedly agree. I will support this uh, unfettered. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Further comments? Councilor Lane. Yeah, I'm not going to be supporting this. Um, I feel like this is a 40-year project, and having grown up here, I've seen it many different iterations. Um, Ten million dollars for four acres of lawn that's never going to get watered is just unacceptable to people that expect more in their parks across the city. Without pulling out the broken brick again, um, I'd like to see us put more money into the rest of the city rather than the waterfront park at this point. I don't think there's going to be, it's going to look you know, palatial, I'm sure, down there. However, I feel for the spend, I'd rather see it at this point go to other parts of the city. So that's my reasoning. That's why I'm voting no on this. Thank you, Councillor Lang. Further comments? Councillor Donahue. <coughs> Thank you, President. Um, as the ward councillor for the Waterfront Park, I do want to state that I do support this um, wholeheartedly. I also want to point out that, you know, Newburyport has several really incredible assets. This is one of them. Um, you know, we really have about four or five, and, and this is definitely one of the jewels of the city that brings people in, like Maudsley, like Plum Island. People come to the waterfront. They come with their boats. They come to walk the boardwalk. Um, it's, it's definitely one of our biggest assets in the city. So. I know it's a big ask, um, but nothing is cheap these days. And you do get what you pay for. And if we want um, something that's going to look nice and be comfortable and be open, then you know there are things that it's, it's going to entail um, cost-wise. So, but that being said, um, I just wanted to state that I, I really do support this project. and. Um, hope that it passes. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Donahue. Further comments, discussion? Councilor Cameron. Uh, thank you. Oh, no, I'm just waiting for you. <laughs> uh, thank you, President. Um, yeah, I, I will support this, and I appreciate all the different perspectives on this. Um, like Council, uh, Councilor Vogel, um, my original campaigning in 2007, you know, this, this was my top issue, and yeah, it does come down to parking and, and parks, and, and you know we've gone through garages and NRA dissolution and various proposals uh, for, for, for what was going to be down there, including condos. Um, at one point, I mean, we've really been around, uh, around, and around and around. And, and I, I am so appreciative of the last couple of terms of the council as I was getting off in two, 2017. I mean, we've, we've gotten it, we've gotten it to the five-yard line. Um, I very much agree with the Ward 5 Councilor. This is an all hands on deck. This can't just be uh, taxpayers. Do I have to say it all over again? You know, I, yeah. I am unmuted. Uh, so uh, is there some other. Who's Connie? Okay, uh, right. Sorry, it's not that important. So I just want to echo what um, the Ward 5 Councilor said. This really is an all hands on deck. Um, it's the taxpayers, and we're acting on their behalf. And um, you know, through CPA, um, you know, it, it is tax dollars, as, as uh, has been mentioned. Um, but we need, you know, similar to the Senior Community Center, um, the football stadium, there's countless examples of parks and public amenities and buildings and facilities that everyone got behind. So, so to our um, business partners and, and the banks and the landowners, um, you know, and, and to 
targeted folks who can pitch in. I think we're going to need all that. Um, and the phasing really, we're not going to uh, outstretch ourselves because we don't have the money. We're not, we're not moving further into a particular phase or into the next phase, so it could, could take a while. Uh, but I am in support of it. Thank you, Councilor Cameron. Councilor Wallace. <clears throat> Thank you, President. I will be supporting this as well, but I, I do agree with the counselor from Ward 1 that value engineering is, is always something we should ask about in every project that we do. Um, so as we go forward, it can, it can never hurt to look at lower cost options that may have you know, similar quality. But I, and I also agree with the counselor from Ward 5 that it is a community effort. So um, I do think it, it will be something that the community will be very happy to see finally begin. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Wallace. I, I wanted to read into the record. Uh, it is a loan order for $3 million, I think yes. you should. So it says that upon recommendation of the CPC, uh, $3 million is appropriated, subject to a final plan being presented to the Council for approval. To pay cost of the Market Landing Park expansion project, including the payment of all costs, incidental and related thereto, to meet this appropriation, the treasurer with the approval of the mayor, and that is um, just boilerplate from that on. However, I just wanted to get the, into the record the uh, amendment, if you will, sponsored by Councillor Steed. Councillor Preston. Yes, hi, thank you. Um, firstly, I just want to apologize to everyone for not being there in person tonight. I feel, feel your pain uh, with every roll call, uh, but I uh, many hours away and literally physically could not be there tonight. Um, but to the matter at hand, you know, well, the price tag has given me pause at times. I really do believe that the Market Landing Park is the absolute jewel of Newburyport. I think it is a necessary project to move forward, and I think it is the best use of CPA funds we could actually um, utilize. I think the uh, was extremely eloquent in his um, support of this project. So I'm not going to try to outdo that. Um, but I do want to uh, further weigh in with my vote to um, make sure that we do to the, sorry, to the counselor uh, from Ward 1's point, we do very much need to be certain that we are retaining funds for maintenance of the park. This is a very large expansion of a very important park and maintenance of the park will be essential to the success um, to this very expensive project. And so I would very much like to look to the um, Roy Trust uh, in, a, in a fashion where we do reserve some funds there so that we can live off the principle of that for the maintenance of the park. But I know that's that's a vote for another day, but I, I do think that's a very important um, piece that we really need to keep a, a, a keen eye on. But but I will be supporting this tonight. And uh, I, I think this is a, a really excellent utilization of CPA funds. Thanks, I yield. Thank you, Councilor Preston. Further comments or questions? All right. So it's a two, 356 and 354? The, for the approval of both orders 356 and 354. All right, roll call. Having said that, Councilor Lane? No. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Z? No. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Dunyu? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Sham. Yes. Motion passes, needing eight. Motion passes. Motion to approve uh, order 371, park grant application and park designation for Mark Landing Park. Second. Okay, so um, this is also related, uh, but it but is slightly different. So as I had mentioned, um, another source of potential funds for this is a $400,000 park grant. Um, this is uh, usually we, you know, the grant is applied for and then we may see it after it's been received. In this case, um, the, the request here is to, um, is to pass this before the application goes in and there is a time constraint there. This language, uh, and I'll explain the amendments in a moment, um, was construed with the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs, also known as EOEEA. And basically they are asking for this um, essentially to show commitment to the project as part of the grant application. Um, of course, we don't know the outcome of the application 
but the Director of Planning Development has reported that there seems to be a favorable view, view of this project uh, so far with the powers that be in terms of granting this. Um, there were three amendments made in committee and one that I'll make on the floor here tonight. Um, the second whereas was struck. Um, this was really at the request of EOEEA, um, so it, it just says it's been dedicated for conservation use uh, pursuant to the special act. They, they did not want to have this language in there. It doesn't change the fact that the, the land was uh, dedicated under Article 97 and, and, and the special act refers to the, all that omnibus dissolution of the NRA and so forth. So that was uh, stricken and that was 3-0 in committee. Um, the last whereas, uh, the, or the last whereas, yes, was, was edited um, in part because we were doing things in a different order. So we were trying to figure out how to make it make sense. Um, and at the time, we didn't know what the disposition was going to be of this bond. Um, and, in, and we really still not quite sure what the disposition will be of the Herman Roy. So we, we tweaked the language in committee. And just uh, basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to show EOEEA a commitment to this project financially. Just so you know, the, the grant can be up to $400,000, and we're hoping for that full 400. And their funding requirement uh, to round it is roughly that they could put in 400, and the expectation would be that the match would be roughly the same. So not quite 50-50, but it's close enough for discussion tonight. So what we have to show is at least that much, and I think uh, we're going beyond here. And this is the one that I'll amend in a moment on the floor. But before I do, I'll just uh, go to the last, be it resolved. Um, we were talking about this, um, and it just seemed to be more Scrivener's that this was going to continue to, as it has been for many years now, be administered. This whole project has been worked on by the Office of Planning in conjunction with the ad hoc, and this, this language essentially uh, continues that. So those were the three amendments that are made, and it's coming to you as amended. Now, the amendment I'm going to make here, and I'm going to talk, you know, uh, ask, I guess, for a friendly uh, to the president who is the sponsor is just that we change the city has secured 1.25 uh, in local Herman Roy. We just say the city has secured $3 million in CPA funds for the construction of phase one thereof. And that we can be assured of because we literally just passed the bond order. We have not disposed of the Herman Roy matter. But I think that more than covers the amount that was requested and is, is defensible. So that's just friendly if it's accepted. Accepted by me. Okay. And then, um, so this is really, a author essentially you should look at this as authorizing the application for the grant, and now it's not really intertwined because we've, we've now taken care of the $3 million. It did, this one did come out of committee three to zero. Thank you, Councilor Sade. As amended and now amended again. All right, further discussion or comments? Sorry, Councilor Jumps? Uh, um, Councilor, yes. So your amendment uh, goes to the language city has secured uh, 1250 in local. It should be 300, 3 million, and then strike in local Herman Roy trust funds. Just $3 million in community preservation funds for the construction of phase one thereof. Got it. Thank you. Sorry, I asked that be 3250 only because of the 250 from last year, if that's okay? Yeah, thank you, Council President. I just, if I may, um, direct it to the, uh, um, just want to make sure, well, to both, so we're good with all this, right? That this meets the... Yes, I do believe that the Council's amendment is fine, mainly because uh, it's a higher number than we, when we spoke with the state as far as the match, and it does show that commitment, so I think that uh, will be a fine substitute, recognizing that you haven't yeah. yet uh, done a um, confirmatory vote relative to the trust funds. Right, and the other amendments as well, and so forth. They're, yes, You're good you. with all this. No, no offense to... Thank you. I was looking for the nod too. All right, further questions, discussion? All right, roll call. Roll call on the motion to approve is amended. Councilor Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Council Preston. Yes. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Wallace. Yes. Council Wright. Yes. Council Zeed. Yes. Council Cameron. Yes. Council Donahue. Yes. Council Khan. Yes. Council Shan. Yes. Thank you. Um, that's it for business tonight. Our next standing meeting of budget will be on Thursday, this Thursday. Um, we are going to start at 5 o'clock, um, a little bit early, and we're going to cap it at an hour. And we are likely going to focus on um, Atkinson, the Atkinson CPC request, 571000 um, because uh, there's a construction season uh, question. So we've been asked if we could take a look at that. The reason we're going to cap it at an hour is because 
the Parks Commission <coughs> is putting together a site walk of the Bartlett Mall at 6 o'clock, which everybody is or will be invited to, or I'm sort of inviting you, but I think you'll hear from the Parks Commission chair. And there's also an associated presentation. And uh, we still have the Bartlett Mall bond, and so this would be relevant to that. And I think that there's a desire to have counselors attend if they are able to. Um, and that is a site walk, so you know it'll be uh, up there at the at the mall. So we'll finish here, try and finish like five or six minutes early, so people can uh, head up there if they want. Um, Atkinson is committee of the whole, so you're all invited. And then we are going to hibernate uh, for a little bit through through Yankee Homecoming, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, tackle some of the new business that we have, and a couple of old pieces of business. But I think that's going to kind of be the the best that we can do. And thank you very much. That's it for budget. Thank you, Councillor. Education, Councillor Klein. Uh, thank you, Council President. So with the summer, the Education Committee will probably try to be meeting at the end of August or early September. Um, so nothing really to report in that regard. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kahn. So General Government, the motion to approve Order 366, the Ward 2 polling place change. Second. Uh, we had a meeting before this council meeting where we discussed moving the Ward 2 polling place from the Brown School to the library. We discussed the improvement that the library location would be with its ADA compliance. Uh, Clerk Jones did a great job explaining what he had spoken to with the, the new head librarian, and it seems like it's a great spot. Councillor Donahue mentioned the improvements to ADA in this specific spot. Uh, we mentioned the possibility of doing some changes to the parking at the Harrison Street lot just to accommodate the uh, smaller amount of parking that's available at the library, but uh, we'll let Clerk Johns handle that in the coming few months. But uh, we wanted, we voted three to zero to approve this polling place change. Further discussion or comments? All right, roll call. Roll call on approving order 366, Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you. All right. Moving right along. Motion to approve appointment 330, Donna Dralick to the HR director. Position. Second. So during count the general government meeting, we met with Donna, Ms. Dralick, and asked numerous questions. Councilor McCauley did a good job uh, asking more specific ones. Uh, she talked about the accomplishments over the last few month, uh, how many months she's been here, talking about training, getting closer to the department heads, working on behalf of the city is how much is a joy that she's uh, had in the job. She's discussed the performance reviews they've had with the unions, uh, improved hiring practices. Uh, and one of the questions asked was how they could possibly integrate the school HR, just our HR department possibly. And a, bring out some of that from the schools. Uh, it was a good discussion overall. Uh, we voted three to zero to approve the appointment of Ms. Dralick to the HR director's position. Discussion or comments? Questions? All right, roll call. Motion, motion to approve appointment 330. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Bogle. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Council President. Yes. Uh, point of order, uh, it's a question about what we just took a vote on. Uh, we also are approving the contract yes. that was included as well. Correct. Thank you. And that contract was a three-year contract that went along with the appointment. All right, that is it for general government. I do appreciate there are some items in here to Councilor uh, Zeed's point, we are going to go into hibernation for a little bit to get past the Yankee homecoming, but we will come back out probably shortly thereafter to deal with some of the communications that we have. I know we have a few that uh, we owe folks some answers on. With that being said, license and permits. Councillor Lane. Uh, nothing to report tonight. Thank you, Councillor Lane. Councillor Wallace, Neighborhood and City Services. Nothing to report other than we will have a meeting next week, Tuesday on July 19th. We have. Uh, several items that have come in, so we will be addressing those. All right, thank, thank you, you. Councilor Wallace. Uh, next on the list, Councilor Cameron, the Planning and Development Committee. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Uh, motion to approve appointment 3206, Bonnie Sontag to Planning Board. Second. 
Did I say 326? You did, almost. Um, so planning and development uh, committee met earlier this evening um, with several uh, appointees and we did uh, vote to approve um, the reappointment for Bonnie Sontag by three to zero. Uh, she has, uh, I'm sure, very well known to all of us. Uh, she's been on the planning board for 20 years um, and feels that, uh, you know, she tries to run that board uh, in a collaborative uh, way. Um, and she, again, she's been there for, for many years uh, with a collaborative approach. We asked her, um, you know, about how, how she sees the planning board working with the council. Uh, we talked about uh, some of the more recent challenging decisions uh, that, that both uh, the planning board and uh, the council were involved in, uh, in terms of the um, institution for savings. And, um, you know, I think, uh, I think we, we uh, all three came away with just a sense that uh, we're really fortunate to have her uh, serving uh, in this capacity and uh, Certainly, we have a strong partnership with them through our joint hearings uh, around zoning and whatnot. So uh, we did approve her three to zero for the full council. Further discussion, questions? Roll call. Appointment approval of appointment 326. Councilor Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. No. Council Preston. Yes. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. No. Councillor Zeed. Yes. Councillor Cameron. Yes. Councillor Dunyu. Yes. Councillor Khan. Yes. Councillor Shan. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, motion to approve appointment 327, Patricia Pecknick to the ZBA. Second. Thank you. Um, we also met uh, this evening remotely uh, with Patricia Pecknick. So the mayor had uh, <coughs> submitted her name for a ZBA appointment. I believe they have, uh, this would be their final um, vacancy uh, unless something's changed recently. So she um, has also served on the Historical Commission and she, uh, you know, when talking about her interest and her take on the ZBA, she felt that the ZBA really represents uh, a broad public interest and is really there to represent a larger public good. Um, she said, and I think we believed her, that she had read uh, all the minutes from 2011 till 2022 and watched the last two years that have been recorded. Um, so she uh, you know, talked about her college experience. So she, uh, I believe, is a professor at Berkeley, um, but just talked about sometimes uh, students looking to, you know, for waiving the rules or some flexibility on rules. So she talked a, a little bit about her approach, and we sort of questioned, you know, her her on that. Um, but I think overall, uh, we felt like she'd be a strong addition to the ZBA, and we uh, approved uh, approved a motion to recommend her to you by three to zero. Thank you, Councilor Cameron. Further questions or discussion? Roll call. Appointment 327, Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. <coughs> yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you. Um, President, a motion to approve appointment 329, uh, Jacob Majahad uh, to the Commissioner on Disabilities. Second. Uh, thank you, Jacob, for being here. Um, uh, you heard from Jacob during public comment, and uh, we did vote three to zero uh, in favor of his appointment. Um, actually, no, we voted two to zero. Um, uh, Councilor Preston and I voting um, as Councilor Wallace was making her way physically here uh, to, to be here in, in council chambers. Um, and I think you heard uh, exactly from Jacob um, very eloquently about why he's interested uh, in serving his community, uh, that he, he sees he's gotten a lot of assistance uh, through the years at the, at the Brown, the Knock Molen, um, and, and in high school. And, um, you know, based on his experiences and his perspective, um, I think he'd be a great addition to the Commission on Disabilities. And we did, again, approve him two to zero. Thank you, Council Cameron. Further discussion or questions? 
All right, roll call. Appointment 329, Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Z. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. <laughs> thank you for Welcome. sitting through all of that, Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thank you, Jacob. Uh, motion to approve appointment 331, Andrew Port, uh, reappointment as the Director of Planning and Development. Second. Thank you. Um, so we also met with Mr. Port, uh, who is also known to many of you um, from, from our work together uh, with the administration. Um, so so I'll, I'll tell you where we ended up on this. Uh, we, we did uh, vote to approve uh, two uh, two to zero with one uh, voting present, uh, Councilor Wallace, uh, with the feeling that uh, with, with the recent suggestions, and I won't speak, I'll speak for you a little bit and then you can, you can say, um, just with, with the recent um, suggested changes in organizational structure uh, that the mayor has uh, talked about through the paradigm uh, proposal that perhaps uh, waiting a little bit uh, just to sort of see um, what changes might come through with planning and development versus, and I've only read it very briefly myself, so uh, with economic development, and, and maybe, maybe it would be uh, worth, um, worth uh, holding that over for a little bit. Um, so we, you know, we, we asked uh, about his achievements, what he felt like, what had happened uh, in a positive way. Uh, Mr. Port's been serving the city since 2010. Uh, he talked about the 40R. Smart growth zoning, uh, the waterfront park that we've spent some time on tonight already, and we know that's been a long slog. Uh, the garage, master plan, uh, various zoning changes, uh, but really having a long-term perspective on the city and, and trying to make it the best place possible uh, for its residents. Uh, we asked about, um, you know, what what possible changes may there be in the future, or things to focus on. And Mr. Port talked about uh, a zo the zoning rewrite. Re rewrite um, which, uh, you know, it, to keep chunking that out and working on that in, in sections, uh, continue to refine processes around permitting to make that easier, um, increasing transparency and making sure that all the information is out there uh, for the public. And um, we also asked about, you know, what, what he might have done differently in the, in the last 12 years, and he talked about um, um, perhaps focusing a little bit earlier on zoning cleanup, which I, which I think those of us who have been around for a while, that, that makes, a sense, uh, makes a lot of sense. And also, um, and this got a little snicker from me, perhaps earlier dissolution of the NRA, which uh, is <laughs> now something we don't have to worry about, but, but I, I thought that was a, a thoughtful response. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll let each, the other counselors speak for themselves, but um, we did approve it again, two to zero to one, uh, with one being present. and. Uh, and, and we had said we certainly hash some of this out uh, on the council floor, and I don't know, in terms of any potential reorg with planning and development, if, uh, if the mayor or, or Andrew Levine wanted to weigh in on that as well. So, thank you, Councilor Cameron. Further comments, questions, Councilor McCauley. Yeah, thank you, Council President. Um, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with the uh, planning director. Uh, he's got great institutional knowledge. Uh, the, to, the position itself demands incredible. Uh, time constraints for meetings, etc. Uh, there's no doubt that he works very hard. Um, but as you've all learned, I separate the individual from uh, the position itself. And I look at the planning office, and I'm a results-based person. And I can't say that I'm happy or comfortable with the results out of the planning office. Uh, there are a number of examples. I'll just use the West End Fire Station. Uh, we voted in November to uh, approve uh, the plan to approve the bond and uh, through procrastination and missed deadlines, the planning office pushed us into um, this year and this new council. <coughs> we put in jeopardy the land acquisition. We put in jeopardy the lower interest rates from bond. Uh, we put in jeopardy lower construction costs from a design that should have already happened. Tonight we get a late file to do a variance on something that we should have um, uh, uh, broken ground in June. So um, uh, so I have concerns. And there are other examples of this, but I'm a results-based person, as I've said before. Uh, 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 thinking 
uh, if we think that uh, putting the same individual uh, into the same organizational structure that exists today in the planning office and expecting different results um, is unfortunately the definition of insanity. Uh, I'm, I'm going to vote no until the planning office is restructured, and I would welcome uh, uh, tabling uh, if somebody would to table this until a full restructure was done. Thank you. Councilor Khan. Great. Okay, thank you, Council President. I think many of us during our budget process, one of the things we talked about is is how the department itself is structured and the number of FTEs or people in that position. And it's really, I think, difficult to expect one person to carry the burden of, of what should probably have more people behind it. And when we talked about the special projects manager, that was one of the things I was asking and specifically was trying to get us to look at from the planning department, our desire to invest there to make sure that everything that, and there's a lot coming through there. My personal experience, and I recognize you know, where things may have um, been experienced by every individual here, my experience in everything that we've had before us that's related from that department is answered. Any email that's sent is responded, but we really can't expect the number of work, the, the, the hours that are expected, the leading of so many boards and commissions. Honestly, like we're, we're really kind of, I have to say, if you look at the number of hours we're expecting from one individual, I think it really comes down to our commitment of what we want to invest in that, in that department. So yes, we could wait for what the result of this study is going to show in terms of the structuring of the planning and um, development, uh, the, the planning department. But honestly, it's not as much the individual as much as the commitment that we're making to the FTEs for that department. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Khan. I see Councilor Preston's hand is up. Yes, hi, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to mention we did have a, uh, a debate within um, the committee in regards to the potential for impending change given the, the recent report from the mayor. And, you know, well, I, I agree that it, making this appointment at this point in time can be a little bit wonky given that there may be changes on the horizon. Something that really pushed me over the edge with this was the fact that the mayor, uh, quite frankly, spoke very glowingly about the planning director. And, and he, he, he stated that he had reservations, you know, sort of coming into his role and that he's really enjoyed getting to know uh, planning director Port over the last six months and feels extremely comfortable with his reappointment of the planning director in this role. So that certainly gives me a, a good amount of solace in the fact that even though, yes, there, there is a lot of um, flux, so to speak, um, as to where the department's way may come down in the impending months, it, it gives me, um, it, it takes away my pause, shall I say, um, to um, to vote yes for Director Port uh, in this particular position. Um, and then I just want to uh, briefly sort of comment about uh, the, the comments from uh, Ward Councilor 5. It's, you know, ultimately, and I said this through the budget process, I feel that the planning office is quite significantly understaffed. And I think our expectations of the output from the department have to be in line with the staffing of the department. We cannot expect blood from a stone. And I do think this department is significantly understaffed. We can only expect them to be able to deliver um, as much as we fund the department. And I, I think it's unrealistic to expect everything from an understaffed department. So I will vote yes to, uh, to further direct report. I yield. Thank you, President. Um, I, I did vote present um, for Councillor at large, summarized it pretty quite well. I don't disagree at all with Councillor Preston and or count, the Councillor at large and Councillor at large. The planning office probably does need additional staff. And I think that is something to look at, um, and I think having that discussion and, and how it fits in with the other departments and and um, 
how it can advance our goals as a city, I think that's very worthwhile. So that's why I think it's worthwhile to put this on hold until we have a, a better picture of that. It's not, it's not even just the study that's coming through. I mean, that did come in, and that's, that's timely. But it's also the bigger discussion, um, you know, what we would, we would like to see. And that, that's it. I, and I do acknowledge he is an, an exceptionally hard worker, and he's at every meeting, and he has institutional knowledge. Um, but I do think it, looking at the overall umbrella of it, how it fits in with different departments, is, is worth doing. So that's why I'd like to wait on this. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Wallace. Further discussion? Councilor Vogel. Thank you, Council President. Um, I could not agree more with the uh, at-large councilors um, with regard to the, the staffing and the expertise in that office and the response I get each and every time I email, text, call, whatever it might be, stop in. Um, that office is tremendously understaffed. And one of the things I really want to point out as we, with, with the Paradigm Report and the, the effort to reorganize the city, it is not an overnight process. I, I urge you all to carefully read through not only the charter but through the paradigm report and to take a look at it. It, it, it it's not an end all be all report. It is extremely airy and there is the, 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 there's no numbers. There's no mention of any type of savings of, of what type of reorganization. So if you're if you're thinking about maybe we ought to table this and not not reappoint this legacy um, based on that, it makes no logical sense. Um, the man knows it all he, and is able to express it all in a million words a minute, which is amazing. Um, I think we need to honor that. I think we need to honor that department. I think we need to take a look at staffing that department and making sure that we're addressing all the needs of the community and not letting this legacy and from legacy go. To, to pause this or to table it or to make it go later, why? The, it, it, it's not there. We, if we're going to go through a reorganization, first of all, there's timing that's involved. We have to have a public, comp, public hearing. We have to go out to the public. We've got time, time lines, lines in there. We need information in, specific information. It's not just, I want to do this and I think it'll save money type thing. So really, I urge you, don't blend those two together. Thank you. Councilor Zee. Thank you. Um, I, I, I guess my, I struggled preparing for this because I, I don't really, it's tough to have sort of an on-the-fly job performance thing on, on the floor. It's sort of unfair because it's not really a two-way conversation. It's one way. So I did not, I did not um, uh, uh, vote in favor of this appointment last time around when it was done as a one year and I won't be supporting it tonight as well. Um, I'm, I'm way uh, in a different corner, I guess. Uh, I'm not really talking about the reorganization and so forth, but I think that um, planning is, is a department that has a significant amount of policy behind it. So, so policy stands about things like density in neighborhoods or how you conduct a certain project or the modesty of the project. And there are respectful differences in policy. I mean, I think that's what we try and approximate here on the council and generally do a pretty good job of doing so. And in this case, some of the challenges I've had is um, just having a difference in policy. And so I've, I've also worked with, the, with this planning director for many years now and have nothing ill to say about the individual in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but at the same time, I uh, do think that there's opportunity to, to try some new things, uh, try a new direction, and figure out sort of what, what you, you don't know what you don't know. And so I think for me, um, that's kind of where I land on this. And um, if the appointment is approved, I, would, I will happily work uh, together and respectfully and so forth. If, it, if it's not approved, it's not with any ill personal will or anything like that. Um, but because some counselors have opened the door to the reorganization, I just want to plant my flag and say that I do not think the planning office is understaffed. I don't. I simply don't, and I, I, I will not support, at least at this point, without any details right from a broad discussion, just simply wholesale expanding a department. If there are specific needs that are identified, then it really has to be proven that those needs are not being met you know, with the existing resources, and is it an allocation problem, is it a time problem, et cetera. I think some counselors have decided that they know that the answer is that it's an understaffing. And I personally, uh, with the information that I have, would, would be just as comfortable to say that I don't think that that's the case. Um, I think that um, 
there's a lot of things and some of it doesn't originate in the planning office. Some of it is simply overweight from sort of asking for too many projects, right? So some people want to add more people. I would rather take away and focus on specific projects and be successful with those projects and do them to completion and not continuously fund 40% of everything and then sort of leave it all hanging out there. So because that Pandora's box was opened, I feel I needed to. Uh, and that's what I think I can say and as best I can tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Zig. Further comments or discussion? Councilor Wright. Thank you, Council President. Um, Everyone has, has uh, spoken glowingly of uh, Director Port. Uh, I feel those, uh, the, you know, the, the same, I share the same feelings that he, uh, you know, he's dedicated to his job. Uh, I would side with the Ward 5 Councillor in that, um, you know, there's, th there's some outcomes that the city would have liked to have seen that we haven't been able to see, uh, whether that's a combination of, uh, of uh, additional staff or uh, more strategic work, um, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, the, uh, the director of planning has had an, had an opportunity to advocate for more funding for his department in this budget cycle that I was part of. Uh, he, he chose not to do that. Um, and so uh, I don't want to list a, a bunch of projects but um, that, that I feel haven't been done well. But I, I do, um, do want to mention the, um, the hazard mitigation plan that was allowed to lapse, which put everybody in Newburyport in jeopardy as far as uh, FEMA and MEMA funding. Um, that's something I think that, that should have been uh, taken care of and not allowed to lapse. Uh, and then I also, uh, at the end of the last council session, there's a couple of zoning ordinances that, I, that he authored and, and, and requested to be sponsored uh, that significantly affected and impacted the residents of Plum Island, who are already uh, burdened with uh, the Plum Island overlay district, which is extremely limiting. And the, uh, the ordinances that came out would, would, uh, were, were going to increase that, uh, the, the, those um, burdens on the property owners in Plum Island. So um, uh, I also would like to see uh, a, a reorganization plan. Uh, there's talk about economic development. Uh, I'm not sure that, um, th that respectfully that that's an area of strength for, for Director Port. And I'd like to have the administration have the ability, if they chose to do a reorg and refocus the planning board and add economic development to that, that, that there's an opportunity for a candidate that more closely um, would have the skill set required. So um, I won't be supporting uh, direct reports uh, at this time. Wow. Councilor Wright, further comments or discussion? Wow. All right. Sorry, my name is mentioned before. So I just want to briefly address the report since it was brought up by a number of people. I think the report was helpful for giving us an idea about which departments needed more wholesale change and which needed more of tweaks. And I think that um, planning department, based on the mayor's decision to reappoint the director, fell more into the category of tweaks being needed. And that would be consistent with keeping the director in place and perhaps making some other, other changes uh, within that department, whether it's to more staff, whether it's to changing of responsibilities, changing of management styles, changing of project assignment. Those are the tweaks that we're thinking of uh, could be in there. And I apologize for using the word tweaks so many times in this statement. Um, but that's, that's, I think, the direction um, that we could think is consistent with the report. Thank you, Mr. Count. Chief of Staff of Bain. Too late. I just have just a couple of thoughts. Um, it's, it's hard to do this. I'm a very feeling-based person, and I feel like the, the director works very, very hard. A lot of these things that have been mentioned, I feel, given a different environment and a different administration, may have worked out differently. So I can't really blame the position for some of the things that have gone on so much as the past administration. Um, I'm going to support the appointment tonight. Um, I feel like with the tweaks that um, Mr. Levine just mentioned, I feel like those things will be remedied in time. Um, and with the reorg, I feel like there's going to be a better change. Also with the director, you know, with the projects, director coming in and, and so on and so forth, I'm looking forward to seeing better results myself, I'll say. Um, and I think that's coming with this new administration and some of the, the, the implementations that they're putting in place. Thank you, Councillor Lang. 
Councillor Cameron. Uh, thank you. Just, just to add, and I appreciate hearing everyone's uh, comments. And um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it, this, this is one of these things where it's it, yes, you're in favor, or no, you're not. Um, I do think waiting for a reorg is, is months down the road. Um, and if it follows within the tweak uh, category, um, you know, we're going to be at the same place and, and essentially it becomes a, a yes or a no. I mean, the fact that the mayor uh, sent us this reappointment so recently, and I believe he would have known sort of where the uh, paradigm report was, was coming, right? I think this, this, this appointment came to us on June 27th, so for once this committee is moving quickly. Um, you know, I mean, and the mayor spoke very, you know, uh, very much in favor of this appointment. And if he didn't want to do it and he wanted to wait uh, for for a reorg, he simply wouldn't have wouldn't have, uh, you know, submitted this as a reappointment. Um, and just, you know, I, I have a difference of opinion, um, and we could, you know, list out all the facts and, and determine who who's more on point here. But um, I'm, I'm never one that just because somebody works hard. Um, is responsive, is a nice person, is professional. None of that really can gloss over a lack of outcomes or a, a lack of progress. I think there has been amazing progress in Newburyport. Um, when you sit back and think about uh, the struggles for, for every, you know, and, and we can still debate now whether they were good things or bad things, but nothing happens easily here. And I think, um, you know, the outcomes um, you know, big and small, and we're on the verge of some, some very significant uh, changes. Um, I had a friend from uh, Boston visiting uh, over last weekend, and just showing him around, uh, you know, it's, you, if you really take stock of what we have here, it is absolutely amazing. Um, and, you know, direct report's been a big, big part of that. Um, I also think it is not uh, easy to work with the personalities on the council, my, mine included, um, you know, it is like steering a car when you've got 11 hands on the wheel, all wanting to go in different directions. Um, I, I've always been very appreciative of his approach of deference, and maybe he will, um, you know, indicate sort of a, a policy preference, but it's always the purview of the council. Um, he says that constantly, and you know, the, well, that's really up to the council. And it is, and I think just to have uh, somebody like that, um, I said earlier in committee, you know, this is, this is kind of like a, a mini public performance evaluation. Um, good people have lots of choices. Uh, Direct report has significant municipal experience. Um, I think these are the sort of folks we want to hang on to for sure, um, and, and that's why I'll be voting very, very uh, easily in favor of this reappointment. Thank you, Councilor Cameron. Further discussion? All right, roll call. Roll call, appointment 331. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. No. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Present. Councilor Wright. No. Councilor Zeed. No. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Present. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Needing six for approval, receiving six. Motion passes. Uh, motion to uh, approve order 358, acceptance of stables, Colby Farm Lane, lot three. Thank you. So um, I, I do want to apologize for one, uh, one housekeeping matter. Um, I, I, well, I, let me explain that afterwards. Um, so we, uh, we were given uh, this in May. Uh, we had two meetings on this. Uh, we, we thought we wanted more information after the first meeting. Um, so this is an acceptance of land um, uh, related to the Colby Farm Lane uh, development. Um, there were two separately permitted uh, pieces of this. Um, this would be an acceptance of the land um, for conservation purposes on the right side, as you, uh, I'm going to look for eye contact for any mistakes I make here, um, as you drive down uh, Colby Farm Lane, which I will call Crow Lane. So on, on the right, um, an acceptance of land on, on that permitted uh, piece. Um, this, this did get um, additional council interest because the first permitted part, it's not part, but the first permitted 
uh, development. On the left, um, there have been some, um, in one particular property, some, um, some flooding, mold issues, uh, stormwater um, issues there. Um, we did uh, talk at length about those in the first meeting and the, the uh, person who's been impacted by that, uh, again, in the first uh, project, um, you know, was there to t with her attorney to, and, you know, so there was a little bit of back and forth about that. Um, the, the zoning administrator, planning director uh, with the health department and the building, uh, building department have been meeting, uh, we're told, uh, with the developer and trying to uh, come to a, a, a solution with that, with that uh, homeowner. Uh, who is in one of the um, one of the inclusionary zoning uh, affordable units? Um, so we, we're hopeful that that will uh, that will continue to to, uh, to progress. Um, you know that said, the acceptance of the land is is a distinct and different um, uh, part of of this and is not directly related to that. Other than it's in the same area, same developer. Um, and you know we're obviously um, concerned that stormwater could be an issue, and, and again, steps are being taken to make sure that that doesn't happen uh, down the road. So um, we did vote this out of committee uh, by three to zero. Um, uh, Director Port may want to add some uh, some further um, clarification on what I've said. Um, the part I apologize for, um, and I thought it was in the packet, but it's not. Um, at that first meeting, uh, Councillor uh, from Ward 1 had suggested uh, some language change just to make it clearer. Um, so basically, we'd, we'd be um, ordering that the mayor is uh, authorized to act on the behalf of the city, enter um, into any and all instruments, including acceptance of a deed uh, to the property encumbered by a permanent uh, conservation restriction. Um, I think the language, which was helpful, um, originally it said if, there were, if the um, restriction, conservation restriction was given to a third party, uh, the mayor could just do that. Uh, the language that um, uh, Councilor Zeed suggested, and again, I apologize, this should have been in the packet, but wasn't, um, is um, a, a little bit of wordsmithing, but basically the grant of any conservation restriction to a designated third party after acceptance of the property deed shall be subject to further approval by the council. In other words, uh, if, it, if the conservation restriction was held by a third party, which is possible, um, the council would, would need to weigh in on that. And I apologize for not making that uh, clear earlier. Again, I don't think it, um, I think that helps uh, strengthen the language, but is um, uh, really doesn't either add or detract from whether we do this or not. I have that language if you need. You do. So just to repeat, so it would go in the last paragraph of the order after the word property, words property deed shall be subject to further review of the council. I can give, I can give it oh, to you. Oh, you have it. Yeah, and you, oh, you have the email from a few days ago. Okay. So yeah. I just want to make sure we know what we're voting on. It's on the record. Yeah, it's a strike of a, um, of a sentence in the middle and then the addition of a sentence at the end. I could read it if you wish. Do you wish for that? OK. Um, <laughs> I can't tell. Please, yes, I do okay, wish for that. The words after conservation restriction where it says comma, the following words are stricken or grant of such conservation restriction to a designated third party after acceptance of the property deed comma. That is struck. And then a final sentence is added that states grant of any conservation restriction to a designated third party after acceptance of the property deed shall be subject to further approval of the council period. And these these uh, these recommendations were drafted by Director Port and, and brought through the chair. Thank you, Councilor Z. Thank you, Councilor Cameron. May, may I just make a comment? Does, does anyone explore whether that condition causes any legal problems for closing? They don't. Okay, thank you. Councilor Lang. Yeah, I just, I'd like to um, continue on the conversation about the um, affordable unit that we have down there. Is there any mention of what the remedy is going to be there? Because this is going to be the last bite at the apple for this. And in my experience with business dealings in that area, once this is gone, we have no, this, I mean, I know it's a separate issue completely, but fixing that affordable unit, which we have the deed restriction on and we technically own, I mean, they, the 
the property owner owns it, however, it is the deed restricted by the city. Once they're gone, they're gone. They're not gonna fix anything that was wrong down there. So just to make sure that we're protecting our assets here, um, is there any mention of what the remedy's gonna be? Um, I, I defer to uh, Director Port. Um, Sure, uh, hey, I appreciate the council's concern. It's, it's one that I share as well about making sure that uh, developments, regardless of the details, are, are done in accordance with permits and uh, you know, all, anybody who's moving into those homes can, can do so and rely upon what's been built. Um, there are obviously some outstanding issues over there in the phase one project. They're obviously um, keeping an eye, the zoning administrator, the building commissioner, health director, et cetera, keeping an eye on the field construction of the phase two project as well. Um, KP Law had given the opinion, clarifying here, that the, the this particular transaction here, um, perhaps procedurally, but otherwise does not provide any legal leverage over the enforcement issues, uh, that in fact those are uh, dealt with through the usual channels of the code enforcement officers related to the permits that have been issued. Um, so um, certainly, you know, it was pointed out in committee that the decision from the planning board requires the conveyance of this land prior to the issuance of a third occupancy. Um, I know that the attorney representing the developer is here tonight, um, and I think that they will make the case that they have submitted and done what they could do to submit that material to the city. Um, and if the council is, is, isn't necessarily able to do that, I don't know um, what what point that will uh, have some bearing on the, the permits. Um, but um, but it's not, I'm not sure that the, the council here is the right entity, if you will, or arm of the city, per KP Law's opinion, um, to be able to compel further action from the developer on the outstanding issues. Although I agree, there are potentially some issues there that still need to be addressed and have, are long outstanding. Um, I happen to share those concerns, um, but the, uh, the point that KP Law was trying to make, and um, you know, certainly the developer's attorney, I'm sure, would speak to this, is just that um, this uh, decision of whether or not to accept the land of his open space, which is consistent with the planning board's approval in the first place under the ordinance, uh, the zoning ordinances have been adopted by the council, um, doesn't necessarily provide direct leverage over uh, the enforcement or compliance issues that, that are elsewhere that I share with you have concerns about. Great. Uh, thank you, Council President. If I could ask the director port again. Um, a couple of things in terms of the occupancy permits and of the, this phase here. I, I understand this is just acceptance of the open space, which I know and, you know, I know we need to do that. Um, have those been approved and have the checks been done? So part of it is, are we learning from this experience? Because it's gonna be hard to go back and find out how such a mishap happened, sure. but all I could do is advocate for those new residents who are looking at these um, homes. Have the boxes been checked to make sure in terms of water infiltration, in terms of um, run, runoff water from the homes, all that drainage, have, has that all been done, in your opinion? It's a fantastic question. I think it goes along with lines. Any other questions you might have on this? Um, Mr. Lean knows this as well. We have been working with our council at KP Law. We have been discussing with health director, building commissioner, zoning enforcement officer. Um, they have actually, as, as in the last few days, been out to the site uh, to look at the work on the phase two project for the uh, very similar issues, just to make sure that we do not see anybody, regardless of um, any dialogue we may have with the developer about the particulars for uh, the one unit that's been referenced here in phase one or project one, uh, to make sure that no one has to deal with that issue, regardless of what went wrong or not um, in, in the phase two project, to look at those exact issues, uh, because we do not want to see anything repeat itself uh, and, and, and I, when I say this I'm referring specific more specifically to an issue that's been raised about whether or not basement slab elevation was properly two feet above gr uh, groundwater uh, on the site which is what goes back to one of the health regulations um, so we, we are heavily looking at that I'll defer of course to the health director uh, on that review right there but there has been strong consultation the last week or so uh, particularly with an expert consultant in that area and I have to defer to the health director further but they are trying exactly that to do that before signing off on any further occupancies for or phase two or the development of the second project. Just a follow up, so has that been completed or that's in progress right Still now? Still in progress right now. Um, some of those, I think they, they may have sat satisfactory results. The others, I think they're still working out the details of. They have not yet concluded. So I'd have to defer to them on that. Okay, so. but I know that this counselor, this council's job is really the acceptance here. That approval, though, that will be done by the appropriate departments. Is correct. that correct? That, so that's the point that KP was speaking to, is just that the uh, proper enforcement of compliance with permits and codes, if you will, across the board are you know, the health director, the building commissioner, the zoning enforcement officer, and irrespective of what may have transpired in the past relative to the first phase project, that, to your point, all of those issues be reviewed thoroughly before signing off on any more further occupancies in the second phase of this developer's projects. 
And then one last, if you don't mind, sorry. And this is probably, again, not the place. And I, I couldn't make the meeting earlier. Um, in terms of fines, if there is, and now I'm kind of going off a little bit, if there were grievances or, or things not done appropriately, is the city in a position to fine for that? Because that's, I can't ignore that, so. Right. Just that I'd have to give deference to KP on. Uh, again, did, did the consultation. We have uh, dialogue with them about, um, and part of this goes back to confirming some results relative to the health uh, data. So the ground, the slab elevation versus groundwater. Some of that data needs to be confirmed first uh, before we can conclude that conversation with the council about um, fines, you know, or fees, or um, what avenues may be taken relative to litigation. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure. Uh, just one thing, if we could find out from KP um, in terms of the um, the affordable unit that I'm talking about, um, if that's warrantable or not um, at this point with the things that were overlooked or not seen um, in terms of what the financial damage is to the city, if, that's, if that unit is no longer warrantable because of these infractions, sure. where does that come back to us for the affordable housing? Um, that involves a little bit more discussion with the DHCD. Uh, I'm not sure that that would have any immediate effect on us. Um, the DHCD has inquired with us uh, because it's an affordable unit. They had, they have, the state agency has checked in uh, and is concerned about that. They haven't, uh, uh, of late, they haven't been uh, inquiring, but they checked you know, several months ago on this issue as we've been trying to resolve with the developer. Uh, I'm not sure that that would impact our ability to, to count that unit uh, on our subsidized housing inventory, if you will, um, but, um, but there definitely are concerns on their part about the viability of that unit. Council has also clarified that it's, um, you know, the developer isn't necessarily off the hook just because certain sign-offs were done at given times uh, at the, to the best of information that was available, best, you know, um, you know uh, available inspections during the pandemic and so forth. That doesn't necessarily relieve the developer of any need to uh, obligate uh, obligations or comply with codes or, or permits. So in, in large part, this is all still responsibility of the developer to, to assure compliance with those codes. Councilor Z. Thank you. Um, I just, I wanted to say a few things. Um, one is, um, so to start, to go backwards, I, I will be supporting this, and I, I mentioned a committee, it was Committee of the Whole, if memory serves, but I did have an opportunity to speak either way if I was uh, there. And, um, you know, this is the effectuation of, of a deal. So the last time we had an OSRD <coughs> acceptance of land across the street on technically a separate project, et cetera, we had a different policy debate. But my point then is the same as my point now, which is, you know, that happened, that, that this is the end of a process, not the beginning of a process. So if there are policy concerns with OSRDs in general, then, then that would actually requisite looking at the, OS, the open space residential development and there's no requirement to allow them. But looking at this on, on the broader scale, did it work? Did it do what we want? And in my opinion, it functioned in that you're getting open space, and in, at the end of the day, that is the trade-off. You're, you're allowing a developer to build a cluster in order to preserve more open space, and um, with the amendment here, I'm comfortable with this. Um, it does say free of permanent structures, which is important to me, so this is truly preservation of open space. Those are some open vistas if you walk down there, and there may be some opportunity for some, some maybe something, light recreation trails or something in the future. And I also think that um, this, this would may or could be a good opportunity for um, a third party to hold the CR eventually if we could make a green belt type um, deal like we did with the West Newbury area around the reservoir where they would kind of handle the any maintenance of trails and things like that that would be for residents to enjoy. Um, but that's another bridge and I think we've, we've covered that here. I, I do want to say that, um, you know, essentially what I'm concerned about is um, I don't view us as a party to these transactions that there are concerns about here, and I'm very concerned that we're kind of flirting with a line that we really shouldn't be from a fiduciary standpoint. And I think that um, w a couple of lines. One is we're, we're bridging into enforcement a little bit, so I think that the, that line there is more of you know, trying to force the administration's hand, frankly, into being more strict, let's say, with their enforcement or taking certain enforcement actions. I understand that. I've been a party to that over the years in my discussion. And second is may, what may end up ultimately being a private party uh, issue or litigation or something like that that we may ultimately be pulled into. So I'm just concerned about that. And I just want to say that I don't know what I don't know and I don't know enough to talk uh, competently about some of those things. But on this matter specifically, uh, this is the best, the, to accept, to not accept this land I think would be harmful to the city, harmful to the residents. To accept it is the logical thing to do 
It's not to, to take away or denigrate from the issues that may otherwise exist, but those have to be resolved through their channel, in, in my humble opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Zeeb. All right, Councilor Khan. Thank you, Council President. I just um, had to just kind of round out this conversation. And, you know, I, I did hear, you know, the open space acceptance, and, and that is exactly what was before us. And, but I, I do ask every single councilor that's sitting here, it's open space at the cost of what? And residents, it's their lives. And I'm sorry, I, I do think when we offer density bonuses, when we're looking at land to develop, I hear so, so many conversations here going on hours of our debate on other aspects that may seem mundane, but at the bottom, at the, at the end of the day, it's about a resident's life. And, and I'm sorry, with, with inclusionary zoning, we approve that. And this is the opportunity to speak out when we know that there is some issues that have happened with a residence who we kind of allowed some of this to happen by our acceptance of this, of this open space development and knowing that some residential units were gonna be built. And then again, I go back to our inclusionary zoning where we do allow density bonuses. So what are we talking about? We're, we're giving some affordable housing, we're kind of keeping them deed restricted, and then we're allowing some, some kind of co condensing so we get more units. And, and I think it's really important as us counselors, there's a few things that we're kind of in, in kind of oversight of, and one of them is land here in the, in the city. So yeah, to me, this is the opportunity to voice this. Otherwise, no one knew about this. No one would know what's going on. And these are policies we're enacting. So it's very important for us. I will be voting present on this. I do understand it's a different issue. We've got a different acceptance process here. But from just principle alone, I will be voting present. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Khan. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Uh, thank you, President. Um, yeah, I will be voting for this to, um, to for accepting this, and and I do um, agree with Councillor Z or Councillor from Ward One that um, that uh, I forgot what I was going to say there that that it is it is our duty to accept the open space because that is kind of a done deal. Um, I think in terms of where the city can learn from it, it's the siting of these developments. We're siting them near high groundwater and groundwater can be um, unpredictable. You can think it's a certain way. That's why we have buffer zones and, and things like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's within the purview of the city council to kind of look at these, these potential issues. Even when something is a worthy cause, we still want to make sure that, that, that it's pr protected, you know, that we're protecting that worthy cause. So um, I think it's just a harder look at, at the processes and how, um, you know, making sure all the boxes get checked and um, asking the tough questions sometimes. So, but I will be voting for this to go through because it is, you know, part of, part of the process. Thank you. All right, this is going to be the last go around for folks. So Councilor Vogel. I'll be brief. Um, I don't quite see the correlation between um, not accepting this and putting pressure on the developer. I think it's sort of, you know, the horse is out of the barn, so to speak, if you will. So I'm going to vote in favor. Um, I hear the concerns, certainly. I think that they're extremely val valid. But um, I just don't I, don't, I don't see the pressure by not accepting it. I don't see how that pressurizes it. Councilor McCauley. Uh, thank you, Council President. I, I, too, will be brief. Um, I, I'll be supporting the amendment, as, as I had alluded to in the uh, committee meeting a couple weeks ago, that pretty much said the, this was a done deal. This was um, this is a separate entity. The the um, uh, the agreements were made, and and a previous council had voted for that and accepted it. Uh, but I do want to offer support to the at-large councilors conversation um, about um, th this is um, this is a direct result of. Um, something we did, and we did it without the right amount of information. Um, as the ward counselor, Colby Farm Lane is on my radar every week. And um, this is just one of a string of 25 different issues that I've addressed over the last year and a half down there. I'm down there at least once a week uh, dealing with other types of things that go on here. So um, it, it's not the sighting, it's um, and, and I'll go back to a conversation I had with both uh, the planning, uh, planning board chair and the planning director is we didn't do our due diligence here the way we should have. 
we cited something uh, not only maybe inappropriately with, for groundwater, which it seems after the fact, but we didn't cite it well from a traffic standpoint, from a safety standpoint, from a spacing standpoint, all of that. And, and the question does come, inclusionary zoning at what cost, right? And, and we, we need to, uh, if it's our decision and the land is ours and, it, and we're going to be involved in these sightings, uh, I do support the fact that we need better conversations and we need better input from our city staff, not just the planning director, but from engineering uh, uh, and, and health in, in this case and building, et cetera, going forward along the way. So uh, thank you for your patience with me, I yield, thanks. Councilor McCauley and Councilor Wright. Just, just quickly, um, I, I think we need to, uh, when this is all done, take a step back, decide whether the benefits of open space and OSRD zoning uh, is worth all of the um, hiccups that come along with it, the density and everything else, and, 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 and along with the administration and, the, and, and us as a body, decide if that's zoning we want to continue to offer. Um, that we should reflect on that. And, and make that decision. Thank you, Councilor Wright. Definitely some lesson learns here. Um, last go around. That's fine. Just one thing, you know, and I, I know people are saying, how is there a correlation? This is part of that deal. The deal wasn't delivered. And I know Ward 1 Council says, I don't know what I don't know. Well, I do know, and I know there's two little kids that can't live in their house at certain times because of conditions. That in and of itself, the deal was not done. So I'm voting no on this. I hope that the administration hears it. I hope that the proper people hear it in the proper channels and they look into it fully and they look into the deal itself. And I'll, for now, I'll yield. Thank you, Councilor Lane. All right, with that being said, roll call vote. Roll call on the approval as amended order 358. Councilor Lane. No. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Present. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Council Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Present. <coughs> Councilor Shan. Yes. Motion passes. Uh, motion to receive and file communication 415 global efforts related potential residential use property. Thank you. Um, our committee voted two to zero to receive and file this. So this was um, given to us at the end of May um, and it's um, an update on the global um, gas station and uh, basically it's uh, eight page or so DEP permanent and temporary solution statement. And if you go through there and look at all the check marks, basically they, they're saying that uh, DEP is saying it's a permanent solution and there's no conditions and there's no significant risk. And we just voted to receive and file it. So that's part of the communication that we'd asked for from them. Further comments, questions? Roll call. Motion to receive and file communication 415, Councilor Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you. Nothing further. Mm -hmm. Just, so, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Zeed. Maybe a motion to refer ordinance 11, 111 back to committee? Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, second. It's because it came out in the consent. Yeah. So we're, we're going to get to that in the, our first meeting in August. Thank you. <coughs> Roll call to return Ordinance 111 back to Planning and Development. Thank you. Councilor Lane? Yes. Councilor McCauley? Yes. Councilor Preston? Yes. Councilor Vogel? Yes. Councilor Wallace? Yes. Councilor Wright? Yes. Councilor Zeed? Yes. Councilor Cameron? Yes. Councilor Donahue? Yes. Councilor Khan? Yes. Councilor Shan? Yes. Ordinance 111 is back in planning and development. Is that it? That's Councilor it. Cameron? All That's right. it. All right. Councilor McCauley, Public uh, Safety. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I would like to do the, some things collectively, um, and, some pe and, and I apologize for the roll call votes that we're going to have to take, but I do think some things should be separate. Um, a motion to approve application 88 and 89 collectively. Second. Um, 
Application 88 is the Greek Food Festival uh, to be held on 729 and 730. Um, the chair um, was present, the chair of the festival was there to present. It's the first full year that they're back uh, from COVID and the takeout, uh, they've learned a lot. Uh, they are requesting seven spots in front of their, uh, directly in front of their church to ease congestion and drop off areas uh, along the way. Uh, they are requesting a street closure from Green to Park, on Harris, from Green to Park, only from five to nine, uh, was going to be to nine, but they, they're going to cut it a little shorter, uh, they believe, going forward. It'll probably be about eight, eight, eight thirty or so, something like that. All of their paperwork was done, um, uh, all of their signatures were done, and we've had no complaints in the past on them. Um, application 89 is a block party for Hill Street and Britcher. Um, this is uh, a multi-year type of block party that they have. Uh, it's run by the Back Bay Neighborhood Association. Um, they, uh, uh, they will, um, uh, there is no amplified music and most of the food is, is brought in. Thank you. I can't get out. Um, yes, thank you, Council President. Um, is the Greek band and the closure, street closure, is that new, um, Chair? I, I just didn't know. Uh, no, they've done that. Uh, they did that two years prior to COVID, and then they didn't do it. Uh, oh. They did it for the two years previously uh, before COVID. They did, only did takeout during COVID, and so they're going back to that. Okay, great, thank you. That did look new to me. I, I've gone every year, so I, I love this, and I was just gonna advocate for it. And lamb shake dinner, that's all I'm telling folks. <laughs> they, they do it at the end, do they it. do it at the end um, of the evening, their evening, so it's okay. it's like five to eight or so. Something like thank you. That. I will advocate for the baklava. <laughs> <laughs> all right, further questions or comments? Roll call. Approving uh, collectively uh, applications 88 and 89, Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. And Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you. Uh, motion to approve application 90, Yankee Homecoming. Second. Uh, Yankee Homecoming is proposed to be 730 through 87. Uh, we had the, uh, one of the co-chairs there, Jason LaCroix, present uh, to answer our question. Uh, he had some troubles because of his late uh, file with the police um, to get his signatures, but he went back and then they uh, made a de uh, detailed police um, outline of what they were going to do, some road closures, uh, some police details that need to happen. Uh, they may need to, Yankee Home may need to supplement some of the security details uh, given the shortage that we have uh, locally, but uh, uh, the marshal has assured us that we'll have other resources from the collaborative in the uh, Cape Ann uh, type of scenario. Uh, for the fireworks uh, and the parade, both of those road closures are the responsibility of the police department, uh, and um, uh, so the fireworks will be determined by the police department depending on the crowd, et cetera, along the way. The parade will run from three roads to uh, State Street, although it may take a detour on Pond, uh, given some of the size of the trucks, et cetera, along the way. Uh, there is a change. Family Day um, on Saturday will be at the Knock Middle School instead of Maudsley. Um, the event concerts uh, will be, uh, they have their Waterfront Trust approval uh, to be there. Uh, they did have some pending items that will always go on with DPS in terms of timing of the cleanup in the morning. Uh, the Yankee Home County Committee handles the cleanup in the afternoon and the timing, et cetera, along the way. Uh, one of the things that we did, uh, the committee was consistent upon, is we did not allow vendors on um, uh, the Ferry Wharf Way uh, next to sea level uh, across from the Bullnose. Uh, we didn't allow it for, uh, we haven't allowed it for any festival this year, uh, Riverfest being uh, 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 the biggest example of that. Uh, therefore, they will have to relocate a couple of their vendors to the Bullnose. They may have to reconfigure that a little bit, but um, uh, they've done the math and they think everything can uh, fit appropriately in there. Um, uh, well, I'll, I'll yield and see if there's any other questions. Great, thank you, Council President. I'm sorry, Chair, um, to the Public Safety Committee Chair. 
You said the city marshal, I see it's denied, and, and I'm guessing you said it, meaning that they have to provide their own detail, that's why the marshal denied it? Uh, the marshal didn't deny it, uh, the lieutenant on staff denied it because he came in too late uh, for his staffing. I think you'll see a second page in there where he actually signed it, uh, and they went through all of the details. Great, thank you. Further questions or comments? Roll call. Roll call on approving application 90, Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Chan. Yes. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I, I'm going to ask for a, a little bit of uh, flexibility here. Uh, I'm looking for application 94. I'd like to waive the rules, uh, and take it up tonight. Uh, it, um, uh, offer up an emergency preamble and a motion to approve as an emergency. Second. Um, application ni 96, uh, excuse me, uh, 94 uh, that I talked to would is a, um, uh, it was really a late file uh, miscommunication on a number of, of uh, a avenues that happened. Uh, it's Misslewood Concourse Elegance Classic Car Tours. Um, they're requesting a stopover in the um, uh, waterfront east, uh, NRA east lot. Uh, the uh, parking clerk has uh, uh, laid out a number of spots that they would look for it. They'd come between uh, 10 and 1130 and then be gone. So um, uh, um, uh, it, it's come in the past. It was an event that drew uh, considerable interest uh, along the way. And uh, we think that uh, given the timing of it on the 16th, it was a nice lead in to the rest of the summer series. An emergency preamble right. and emergency just motion preamble. To, motion of emergency motion to declare an emergency and approve. Correct. Yes. Okay. And second that leave the rules. And second. All right, roll call. Council Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Council Preston. Yes. All right. Thank you. Council Vogel. Yes. Council Wallace. Yes. Council Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Donahue. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Shan. Thank yes. you. Uh, one more item. Um, uh, uh, this is uh, application 96, uh, motion to waive the rules, uh, take it up tonight, emergency preamble, and a motion to approve as an emergency. Second. Uh, this. Uh, sorry, okay, sorry. Now I see 96. Okay, uh, 96. This is uh, fill the boot from the uh, firefighters. Uh, this came in, I think, while we were doing the uh, uh, police uh, swearing in of the sergeant. It was that late. Um, there isn't really much information here, and I would ask that we approve it with two contingencies. One, that we get a an email from the deputy that says he's approved this for activity for the uh, firefighters, and two, that they name the charity that they want to raise money for. Uh, the application um, was done in haste, but if it is a worthwhile charity, I don't necessarily want to uh, penalize anyone involved in that. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Councilor Khan? Um, yeah, thank you, Council President. So I'm, just a couple of questions I have. I mean, I think the first one too, and I cannot remember, uh, does this typically happen during the Thursday, Friday, Saturday of Yankee Homecoming week, or is this new? Nope. So they've done it then. Yeah. And, uh, threw us all off. Okay, maybe that's why I forgot. Um, so in terms of the um, attendance during that time, nine to four, I know that's a busy time. There's the sidewalk, like our Yankee Homecoming's resuming their sidewalk sales on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of curious about, um, I guess from a public space safety. So the marshal did sign off on this. Uh, it looks like it's yeah. for the firefighters. So I'm sure, and I'm assuming, that appropriate detail will be done for just public safety in that area. Just want to make sure that was. Yeah, there was no sign offs needed. There's nothing closed. They're just really standing. That's why. Uh, but it's a great question. If you'd like to add it as a contingency, I, I would, uh, I'd be open to that. Council. Uh, Council Wallace. Sure, I can help answer that question because every year I get stuck in that because it happens to be when my son would go to the Lego camp at, at NYS and. Um, it, 
the traffic is so slow at that point because it's almost like traffic calming. So um, it, it felt very safe. And you know, you have firefighters and all of that around you. So it seemed very controlled. Okay. Just let you know. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, Council Wallace. Council Lang. Isn't it for muscular dystrophy every year? Isn't the jury isn't the jury uh, so. It's not. I got you. All right. Go ahead. So same as the last one? <laughs> that was that yeah, that was it. All right. So it's motion to declare an emergency and approve. All right, roll call. On 96, fill the boot. Councilor Lane. Yes. Council McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. Councilor Sheehan. Thank yes. you. Nothing further, Council President. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor McCauley. Thank you for catching those last two. Uh, public utilities, Councilor no. Vogel. Nothing tonight, thank you. Rules, Councilor Vogel. Nothing tonight. Good of the order. I'm sorry, I just want to ask about application 95 also has a date that is, mm -hmm. isn't that before our next meeting starting 8-1? I don't even know if it's ready to go. That's the shanties. 8-1. Yeah, 8-1 it, it, uh, to 10-2, but there's too many unanswered questions. Okay, there. that's fine. i just trying to catch all the ones that are before our next meeting. Any other questions? All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, roll call. Motion to adjourn. Councilor Lane. Yes. Councilor McCauley. Yes. Councilor Preston. Yes. Councilor Vogel. Yes. Councilor Wallace. Yes. Councilor Wright. Yes. Councilor Zeed. Yes. Councilor Cameron. Yes. Councilor Dunyu. Yes. Councilor Khan. Yes. And Councilor Shan. Yes. Thank you and good night. Thank you and good night.